It all begins with our protagonist named Nishikata, who is in his classroom preparing a little prank for his classmate named Takaji. The boy makes a paper spring, intending to scare Takaji, but to his bad luck, he ends up being the one who gets scared as Takagi was one step ahead with her own prank. Because of this, our boy lets out a loud scream that the whole class hears, prompting the teacher named Tanabi to call them out. After that, Nishiketa plans a new prank to play on Takaji, since he couldn't carry out his first one. Fortunately for the boy, he doesn't have to think too hard about a new prank, as Takagi herself asks him for a favor. She asks him to lend her his eraser, to which the protagonist agrees. After this, he tells her that she's a clumsy and forgetful girl, hoping that this would make her feel bad. Ironically, Takaji doesn't feel bad at all. In fact, she tells our boy that there's a name written on his eraser. She makes him believe that the name on his eraser is the person he will spend the rest of his life with. Upon hearing this, Nishikata gets nervous as he's sure he didn't write any name on his eraser. But with the way Takaji admires the eraser, he starts to believe that maybe he wrote a name unconsciously. The boy gets so nervous that he asks Takagi to give him back his eraser. When he checks it, he realizes that there's indeed no name written, which means he was ridiculed by Takagi once again. After this, our boy devises a new plan to finally make a fool out of Takagi. When she asks the teacher to go to the restroom, Nishikata takes the opportunity to grab her eraser and write one of their classmates' names on it. But before he could write any name, he notices there's already something written on the eraser. The phrase on the eraser reads, look toward the hallway. When he does this, our boy sees Takagi, realizing that once again he's been tricked by her. This time, however, it wasn't entirely a prank, as the eraser not only had a phrase written on it, but also a name. His own, though he had no idea about it. On a new day, Nishikata goes to school as usual, but this time he had to wake up early, as it's his turn to handle classroom cleaning. Before entering school, he spots Takagi from a distance, so he doesn't hesitate to rush to the classroom to play a prank on her. Upon arriving, the protagonist finds that Takaji is nowhere to be found, so he begins to search for her desperately. After a long search, the only thing Mishikata could find were Takagi's shoes, so he gives up and decides to take a break. During his break, the girl suddenly appears to scare him as she had been hiding behind the curtains all along. Because of this, hours later, our protagonist thinks of a way to make Takaji laugh in class, so that the teacher Tanabe would notice and scold her. One of his classmates suggests making funny faces, this is exactly what Nishikata does a few minutes later in class. Although he fails to make Takaji laugh, she still enjoys herself a lot as Mr. Tanabe scolds the boy for making faces during class. Due to the teacher's scolding, the protagonist decides not to look at Takaji knowing that if he does, he might end up trying another prank on her. And as always, his pranks go wrong, leaving him as the only one at a loss. Surprisingly, this time it only took them looking at each other for Nishikata to laugh uncontrollably, as he realized that Takaji is the girl who always manages to make him smile. On a new day at school, Mr. Tanabe informs his students that today they'll be practicing their calligraphy. Tanabe tells them they can write anything that comes to mind as the important thing is to practice the Japanese characters. Our boy has trouble deciding what to write, but fortunately, Takaji suggests he write something he dislikes about her. Mischievously, Nishikata writes lack of self-control, and when he shows it to her, she remains unfazed as she had written status quo. Takaji explains that she wrote that to let him know that she loves that he's not of a very high status quo, because if he were, she wouldn't be able to tease him. This catches Nishikata by surprise and hurts his ego a little. That's why he decides to write a new word to annoy Takaji. This time, our boy writes kindness, since he thinks that's what Takaji lacks. Ironically, before he could show her what he wrote, the girl started acting very kind to him like asking if he was okay or returning his brush after it fell. Due to this sudden kindness from Takaji, when it comes time to show her what he wrote, Mishikata decides to show her the other side of the paper, where he wrote something entirely different. The boy had written the phrase, stop annoying me. This surprises Takaji as she has no intention of stopping, and to make that clear, she tells him to check his cheek. When Nishikata does, he realizes he has a bit of ink on it, which Takaji had previously put there. Naturally, our boy is annoyed by this, while Takaji laughs at the amusing situation. The next day, Mr. Tanabe gives an English test. While everyone is focused on their books, our protagonist can only think about how he can bother Takaji. Before he could come up with a plan, Tanabe calls on him to read a phrase aloud in English from the book, but since the boy was distracted, he ended up saying anything, leading Tanabe to scold him. Even so, this doesn't stop him from continuing his plan to find a way to annoy Takaji. Nishikata concludes that he will distract Takaji enough to make her lose track of the class and end up saying anything when the teacher calls on her. The boy starts his plan effectively by managing to distract Takagi by asking her questions about her daily life. When the time comes for Tanib to call on Takagi, she seems to have lost track of the class because of her chat with Nishikata. 
But ironically, she manages to say the English phrase from the book correctly, proving to Nishikata that she is a smart girl who isn't easily distracted. For this reason, our boy thinks of a new way to distract Takaji, but unfortunately, the teacher calls on him again to stay on track with the class. The following day, the students enjoy themselves in the school pool. Unfortunately, Nishikata can't swim with them, as he injured his right hand. Because of this, Takaji decides to keep him company, and to tease him as usual, she asks how he hurt his hand. The protagonist doesn't want to tell her but isn't necessary, as Takaji, using simple logic, manages to guess that Nishikata was bitten by a stray cat. After guessing the reason for his injured hand, Takaji smiles and asks the protagonist to try to guess why she isn't swimming with the other students. Nishikata thinks of many possibilities and thanks to his friends Takao and Kimura, he arrives at two conclusions. The first is that Takaji is experiencing her teenage days where she feels a lot of abdominal pain. The second option is that Takagi feels self-conscious about her body. These two options linger in the boy's mind and after thinking about it for a while, he tells Takagi that he believes the reason she isn't swimming with the other students is because she's experiencing her teenage days. In response, Takagi gives him a disapproving look, causing Nishikata to blush. Because of this, Takagi laughs out loud and decides to leave, not without first telling him that when she looked at him, she knew he would say something silly like that. Afterward, she puts on her swimsuit and gets into the pool, and this is when Nishikata realizes that the reason she wasn't getting into the pool was simply to tease him, as usual. Days later, our protagonist is on his way home after school as usual. Suddenly, Takaji catches up to him and, with nothing better to do, decides to keep him company. She notices that Nishikata is drinking a new lemon-flavored drink, so she asks him how it tastes. He responds that it's delicious and then hands her the drink so she can taste it herself. Once our protagonist shares his drink with Takaji, he jokingly says that this would count as an indirect kiss. Takaji isn't phased by this, she decides to drink from Nishikata's bottle anyway. As expected, our protagonist is stunned by this. When Takagi hands the drink back, he gets very nervous, knowing that if he drinks, it would mean another indirect kiss with her. So he dares to throw the drink into a trash can. Nishikata is surprised to see that he managed to make the shot into the trash can, and feeling motivated by this, he decides to pick up another can from the ground and try again. Once more, he lands it in the trash can which leads him to believe he has enough talent to become a basketball player. After this little display, Takaji tries to do the same, but as expected, she isn't as good at tossing cans as Nishikata. He laughs at her, and feeling confident in his newly discovered skill, he challenges her. He's very sure he'll win, so he doesn't hesitate to let her know that if he loses, he'll do anything she asks. Takaji feels even more motivated, and as if by a miracle, she manages to land a can in the trash. Nishikata gets nervous at this, so he tries to calm himself and focus on making the shot because he doesn't want to lose the competition. The protagonist prepares to throw his can, but just as he's about to toss it, Takaji distracts him with her words, causing him to miss the shot. Because of this, Takaji wins the competition, which means our boy must do whatever she asks. Ironically, she doesn't ask him for anything as she considers Nishikata easier to tease when he's doing nothing. After this, they part ways to head to their respective homes. Upon arriving home, Nishikata thinks about how he can handle all the teasing Takaji has given him up until now. Thanks to a commercial, he decides to do one push-up for every prank Takagi pulled on him during the day. In this case, he counted 15 jokes, so he did 15 push-ups. The next day in class, the boy seems to have muscle aches. When Takagi asks why he's in pain, he mentions that he started working out at home. In response, she doesn't hesitate to tease him, poking him to watch him squirm in pain. At the end of the day, the protagonist does push-ups again, this time 30 as Takagi had teased him 30 times during the day. On another morning after class, while Nishikata and Takagi are walking home, she comments that he looks more toned. This makes the protagonist blush, which causes Takagi to laugh at him. Nishikata asks why she teases him so much, to which she replies that she loves teasing him because she finds his expressions funny. On a new rainy day, our protagonist notices that Takagi didn't bring her umbrella, so he doesn't hesitate to tease her. Unfortunately, his joke backfires as Takagi points out that although she didn't bring her own umbrella, he has one that he can share with her. This means our boy is now obliged to walk home with Takagi, while holding the umbrella. Along the way, he can't help feeling very nervous due to Takagi's closeness, so he decides to tease her by calling her an airhead for forgetting her umbrella. To Nishikata's surprise, Takagi admits to being a bit of an airhead, acknowledging that she sometimes forgets things. Because of this, our protagonist is happy, as he finally made Takagi admit one of her many weaknesses. But not everything is as it seems, as Takagi claimed to be forgetful just to tease Nishikata, and she demonstrates this by asking him to say romantic phrases she supposedly forgot. Takaji insists on making him say things like, I love you, 
but to her misfortune, the rain suddenly stops. If that wasn't enough, they now have to go their separate ways and Mishikata is more than grateful not to be teased by Takagi for the rest of the day. Before our protagonist can head home, Takagi teases him by saying she completely forgot the way to her house, so she asks him to accompany her. On a new day at school, Mr. Tenadi punishes Nishikata for interrupting his classes over the past few days. His punishment is to clean the science room. Although this sounds simple to Nishikata, it's a tedious task. Fortunately for him, Takagi magically shows up to help him clean, though she's really just there to keep him company and tease him as always. While our protagonist cleans the room, their classmate Nakai suddenly appears, accompanied by a girl named Mano. They seem to be on a date, as Mano was clinging closely to Nakai and trying to get him alone. When Takaji confirms to Nishikata that Nakai and Mano are dating, he becomes nervous, especially when Takaji talks to him about teenage romance. Because of this, our protagonist blushes intensely and continues cleaning to clear his mind. After this, Nishikata and Takaji head home together. She asks him to buy her a drink, to which he promises he'll buy it only if she does a flip on the bar at the park. She accepts the challenge but tells him she'll only do the flip if he doesn't watch. Nishikata agrees, so he turns around once Takaji starts her flip. After this, it's our protagonist's turn. With great effort, he manages to pull off the flip successfully. But since he doesn't trust that Takaji did hers properly, he asks for his second round. She does her flip again, but this time he secretly peeks to confirm that Takaji does it correctly. To his surprise, she completes the flip successfully, so Nishikata gives up and finally decides to buy her the drink. At night, Nishikata stays out watching a series about forbidden love. This combined with the air conditioning on, caused him to catch a cold. As a result, he arrives late to class the next day. The only good part of his cold is that it's not real. He's only faking it to take advantage of Takagi's kindness. During class, Nishikata tries to exaggerate his fake cold so that Takagi will treat him sweetly, but his plan backfires when she doesn't bother to tease him, as she believes he's actually sick. Consequently, he gets tired of pretending to have a cold, which leads him to reveal the truth to Takagi. Nishikata quickly regrets this, as Takaji wastes no time letting him know that she'll be teasing him for the rest of the class now that she knows the truth. After school, Takaji and Nishikata walk home together. As they walk, they're being watched by Mina, Sine, and Yukari, who are their classmates. They can't help but follow them on their way home, curious about the nature of their relationship. Takaji senses that they're being watched from a distance, so she pulls Nishikata aside and they hide in some bushes. Thanks to this, Mina, Sime, and Yukari decide to leave him alone and head home. The only one at peace is our boy, as he feels nervous being so close to Takaji. She starts to tease him about it, loving the sight of Nishikata blushing. And as a final joke, Takaji challenges him to a race home. On a new day, we see our protagonist in the library, working hard to study for an important exam. He has to pass this exam, otherwise his parents will ban him from playing video games. While he pushes himself to study, Takaji appears to keep him company. Nishikata thinks Takaji is planning to tease him as usual, but to his surprise, she actually ends up helping him study. The reason Takaji helps him is that she feels guilty for teasing him daily in class. Despite this, Nishikata doubts Takaji's intentions, but as he notices nothing strange in her words, he decides to believe her. Hours later, as they walk home, Nishikata thanks her for helping him study, admitting he would never have imagined she helped him like that. Takaji quickly confesses that she only helped him study just to tease him as usual. It turns out that the topics she helped him with aren't even on the exam, so she only wasted his precious time. After the big test, our protagonist receives his score, a 59. Obviously, the score is quite low, so he wants to hide it from Takaji. She tries to guess his grade, and when she can't get it right, he ends up telling her proudly that his actual grade is 59. Because of this, the math teacher steps in to reprimand him for distracting his classmates. Afterward, Takagi asks him to guess her math exam score. Nishikata is pretty sure she scored between 92 and 99 points. Within this range, he's confident that her score is 92 as her reaction when he says this number gives it away. But since he thinks her reaction is exaggerated, he decides to guess 99. Takaji then shows him her score, which is indeed 92, and tells him he should trust her more as she hinted at her score with her reaction from the start. The next day, Nishikata buys some manga from his Forbidden Love series. As he leaves the store, he runs into Takaji. She asks him what he bought, and he lies, saying he bought soccer magazines. He tries to leave to avoid more questions, but unfortunately for him, she decides to follow him. Along the way, she tells him she knows what he really bought, mentioning the Forbidden Love manga. Nishikata gets nervous, and since it's a personal matter, he asks her not to tell anyone. She agrees to keep his secret, but, as she now knows one of his secrets and he doesn't know one of hers, she decides to tell him one. Takagi whispers in his ear, I like you. 
The protagonist blushes deeply at this, which makes Takaji laugh. She quickly tells him that what she said was a lie, saying she only wanted to return the lie he told her first. Hours later, after classes, Takaji and Nishikata get caught in the rain on their way home, so they have no choice but to take shelter in a shrine. Takaji ends up completely soaked from the rain, so she asks Nishikata to lend her his pea shirt. He gives it to her, unable to stop himself from blushing knowing that Takaji is wearing his clothes. Minutes later, a cat appears, shakes itself off, and soaks our protagonist. Because of this, Takaji offers him her pea shirt, which he accepts. As he puts it on, he blushes and feels a bit strange, and his instincts make him smell the nice scent of Takaji's shirt. Shortly after, the rain stops, so they're able to head home. Summer vacation is approaching, and our boy couldn't be happier since he hates school, and now he'll be able to enjoy the break with his friends Takao and Kimura. Takaji, on the other hand, loves going to school because she has a reason that makes her enjoy her time in class, Nishikata. As they walk home together, they see Nakai and Mano riding by on a bike, which gives Takaji the idea to do the same. She suggests to our boy that they go for a bike ride together, but he refuses. She tells him that if he doesn't agree, he'll have to buy her a drink, leaving him with no choice but to accept. Before they can ride together, they practice in a small space. Unfortunately, Nishikata doesn't seem to have the strength or endurance to carry Takaji's weight, so he gives up and decides to buy her the drink. Afterward, he wants to get a drink for himself too, but realizing he's out of money, he pretends he isn't thirsty. Takaji can't help but notice how sweaty he is, so she buys a drink, knowing he wouldn't drink from her since he sees it as an indirect kiss. Takaji then tells him that the bike riding practice will continue tomorrow. When the day arrives, Nishikata visits Takaji at her house and she's ready for practice. Unfortunately, because of a heavy rain that fell a few minutes before, the practice has to be postponed, but that doesn't mean they have to go back home. Takaji suggests they go out somewhere, and he agrees but says he'll only go if they go somewhere away from people, as he doesn't want their classmates to see them together. Takaji agrees and doesn't hesitate to take him to the darkest tunnel in town. She tells him that paranormal things happen in this tunnel, from ghostly apparitions to people disappearing. Naturally, this scares our boy, but as a guy, he has to hide his fear and act brave. As they go deeper into the tunnel, Takaji seizes every opportunity to scare Nishikata, and even though he tries to do the same, Takaji is always one step ahead of him. At the end of the tunnel, he's ready to go home by another route, but Takaji forces him to go back through the tunnel again. Once home, he does his push-ups, doing more than 15 this time since Takaji teased him a lot in the tunnel. Days later, our protagonist has one of the worst days of his vacation. First, he woke up way too late, and as punishment, his parents bade him do the day's shopping. Then, while biking to the store, he spotted Takaji in the distance, which seemed odd since she had told him she was going on a trip with her family. So he decided to follow her secretly to give her a scare. But unfortunately for him, she ended up scaring him instead. Then she gets startled when an insect suddenly appears. Nishikata tries to keep Takagi from falling, but in the process, he ends up falling and injuring his knee. This made him consider it one of the worst days ever, especially knowing he's on vacation. Takagi didn't hesitate to offer him a handkerchief to stop the bleeding on his knee and let him know that, although the day was one of the worst for him, it was one of the best for her since she got to see him. Her words make our boy blush. One day at the mall, our protagonist buys the latest volume of his forbidden love manga. Afterward, he's ready to rush home to read it, but he won't be able to because he runs into Takaji, who's intent on teasing him. She noticed he was at the bookstore, so she asks if he bought the latest volume of the forbidden love manga. Nishikata feels cornered, as he doesn't want to reveal this embarrassing secret. To dodge the question, he tries to mess with Takaji by telling her to guess which volume he bought. As he looks at her with a victorious expression, she starts to waver, but she still sticks to the idea that he bought the Forbidden Love Manga volume. When she asks him to show it to her, he does so, disappointed since he had hoped she wouldn't guess correctly. Ready to head home, he stops when Takaji asks him to help her pick out a swimsuit. Once they're at the swimsuit store, Takagi begins trying on various combinations, asking Nishikata to pass her different options. As expected, he's extremely nervous and blushing, and at one point he's forced to hide in one of the fitting rooms when Nakai and Mano appear. Fortunately for him, they don't stay long as Mano notices Takaji is accompanied by a boy. Afterward, Takagi asks Nishikata to continue their search for the perfect swimsuit. As she shows him the different swimsuits, he nods indifferently, feeling too embarrassed to react. The next morning, the two meet up to study, as Takagi had offered to help Nishikata. They gather in his house, specifically in his room. This simple fact makes him incredibly nervous since it's the first time a girl has entered his room. Takaji observes his room in detail and notices he has all the volumes of the Forbidden Love manga. She also notices the room itself is quite plain, so she tells Nishikata that his room is a lot like him. 
She couldn't mean this as a compliment, she simply wanted to say that she likes the room. Setting this aside, they get to work on studying, and since there aren't two chairs in the room, Tekaji suggests they sit on the floor using his bed as a table. Once they're comfortable, Nishikata is ready for Takagi to help him with his homework. However, she laughs and clarifies that she never said she'd help him. Her words were simply, let's study at your place. Because of this, our protagonist has no choice but to do his homework on his own. As he works, Nishikata glances at Takagi and loses focus, making a mistake in his writing. He reaches for the eraser, but as he does, he ends up touching Takagi's hand, since she was also reaching for it. This creates a tense moment for Nishikata as it reminds him of a romantic scene from his Forbidden Love manga. He gets so flustered that he decides to leave the room under the excuse of going to get them some barley tea. Hours after this awkward moment, Takaji is ready to head home, but before she leaves, she lets our boy know she'll be coming back to his house soon. Summer vacation ends and it's time to go back to school. On the first day back, a big typhoon hits the city. This typhoon makes our protagonist feel like the god of wind, so he raises his arms, exclaiming that he can control the wind. As expected, Takaji arrives just in time to see this and, as usual, doesn't hesitate to mock him by copying his gestures. Afterward, she asks if he notices anything different about her, to which he replies that she didn't bring her bicycle this time. Takaji tells him he's right, then asks him a follow-up question. Why does he think she didn't bring her bike today? She gives him a time limit for his answer. The time it takes for a plastic bag floating towards them to reach them. Ishikata hurriedly tries to come up with a reason, and the only thing he can think of is that she didn't bring her bike because the wind would blow up her school uniform. Since that's his only answer, he hesitates to respond, and before he knows it, a plastic bag reaches them, meaning the time limit is up. Takaji explains that she didn't bring her bike because it's dangerous to ride during a typhoon. After this, the two walk to school, and along the way, Takaji teases Nishikata again by copying his gestures and declaring herself the goddess of wind. This irritates him, so he yells at her to stop teasing him. She agrees, but teases him one last time by challenging him to a race to the school. Hours later, all the students in Nishikata's class participate in a marathon. He's confident he'll be the first to finish since he spent weeks practicing to be number one. Everything seems to be going well until Takaji catches up to him and starts teasing him to distract him. Takaji speeds up, so Nishikata does the same, determined not to let her win. Once he catches up to her, he makes a proposal. If she can get 50 meters ahead of him, she'll be the winner. She accepts and he's confident she won't be able to do it. To his surprise, Takaji manages to gain the 50 meters because by school rules, girls run a shorter distance than boys. As a result, Takaji reaches the girls' finish line and heads back, leaving Nishikata behind. On another day, the two walk home together after school. Along the way, Nishikata proposes a game. They must try not to laugh, and the first one to laugh will lose and have to do whatever the winner says. Takaji agrees, and he's confident he'll win since he plans to tickle her to make her laugh. Ironically, he can't bring himself to do it because he's too embarrassed at the thought of touching her. As a result, she ends up tickling him instead. Although he manages not to laugh, he bursts into laughter when she starts making funny faces, losing the game. As his punishment, she orders him not to eat any more rice, something very painful for him. Soon, though, he's relieved to find out she was joking. The real punishment she gives him is not to read any more forbidden love manga. This makes Nishikata quite upset and sad, as he would have preferred not to eat rice. In a different scene, we see Mina, Sane, and Yukari entering the same tunnel that our protagonists once went through. The group of girls has fun in the tunnel, and despite the darkness, none of them feel scared. At the end of their journey, Mina is happy to have gone through the tunnel with her friends, though she feels a little sad knowing moment like this won't happen again until the next summer vacation. Days after recent events, Nishikata gets his first cell phone. The first thing he does is add his friends Takao and Kimura to his contacts. After that, he starts planning a way to tease Takaji. He lends her his phone, hoping she'll ask for his email, but unfortunately for him, she doesn't do that. Instead, she starts checking out the phone's features. After school, Nishikata feels disappointed by his failed plan, so he tries to ask Takagi for her email directly. She suspects what he's up to and teases him, asking why he wants her email. Feeling cornered, Nishikata has no choice but to admit that he wants her email so he can tease her from home. Hearing this, she decides to give him her email, but points out that now that they're both in each other's contacts, they can tease each other. This makes it clear to Nishikata that while he can now bother Takagi from home, she can do the same, leaving him to regret his plan to get her email. The next morning, Takagi is in the classroom cleaning the chalkboard. Nishikata arrives to help her, as he promised. She notices he looks tired and asks if he slept well. He admits he didn't, as he was chatting with his friends all night. She advises him not to do that, warning it could cause him trouble later, based on her own experience. This makes Nishikata wonder who Takaji has been chatting with lately, 
but instead of asking directly, he tries to come up with a plan. He casually asks if she's been chatting with her father, to which Takaiji replies that she hasn't, saying it wouldn't make sense to chat with her dad all day. After this, she tells him she'll reveal who she's been talking to if he tells her what he was chatting about with his friends last night. Nishikata smirks mischievously because in reality he wasn't chatting with friends but watching the videos they'd sent him. He tells Takagi this and to prove it, sends her a horror video of a demon-possessed goat. Nishikata hopes that the video will scare Takagi, but to his disappointment, it doesn't work. She simply says it's not that scary to watch during the day. Because of this, he decides to send her another horror video that night, hoping she'll finally get scared. But before he can do this, Takagi calls him, letting him know she already knows what he's planning. This surprises Nishikata, and since they're on the call, he not only fails to send her the video but also ends up not sleeping as neither of them ends the call. The next day, Nishikata sees two cats fighting and tries to snap a photo, but they run away just in time, and he ends up with a plain picture of a wall. He's disappointed because he was eager to take a photo of the fighting cats for a funny photo competition he started with Takao and Kimura. When he mentions this to Takaji, she's amused and makes a funny face. This gives Nishikata the idea of taking a picture of her making funny faces, thinking it will give him the edge in the competition. Takaji agrees to let him take a picture but only if he does everything she asks first. As they walk home, she doesn't ask him for anything, instead taking every opportunity to tease him. During one of her pranks, she manages to snap several photos of him with a scared expression. When she looks at the pictures, she can't help but burst out laughing, giving Nishikata the perfect chance to snap a photo of her. Ironically, she strikes a smile and pose just as he takes the picture, so his plan fails successfully. He tries to bargain with her, saying he'll delete her photo if she deletes all the embarrassing ones she took of him. Takaji declines the deal, saying she looks fine in her picture, so she doesn't care if he deletes it or not. As she leaves, however, she tells him that if he keeps the photo, he shouldn't show it to anyone since that would be embarrassing for her. Hearing this, Nishikata decides not to delete the picture, thinking he might use it later on. Days later, as our protagonist is on his way to school, he accidentally bumps into a pole. He tries to act as if nothing happened, but unfortunately for him, Takagi appears to walk with him. He hopes that Takagi didn't see him collide with the pole, so he tries to talk about anything except the accident. During their conversation, she mentions that he seems taller, which makes him feel physically bigger since his winter uniform fits him perfectly. Nishikata teases Takaji, saying that he is taller than her. In response, Takaji decides to play a prank, starting by retracting her words and telling him that he hasn't grown at all. To prove her point, Takaji takes him to the shrine, where they measure their heights by placing their backs together. She cheats by standing on tiptoe, and after measuring their heights, she tells him that they are the same height. Nishikata is doubtful, so he asks her to measure their heights again. This time, she stands in front of him and lets him measure her height himself. When Nishikata does this, he realizes that Takaji cheated, as he has indeed grown a bit taller than her. She congratulates him, but then says that growing taller is actually a bad thing because it causes vision problems and disorientation. She reminds him of this by pointing out that just a few minutes ago, he bumped into a pole. Nishikata gets nervous, realizing that Takaji saw him run into the pole earlier. When they arrive at school, Takaji continues to tease him, this time by touching him with her cold hands. This catches the attention of Mina and her group, who start to believe that Takaji and Nishikata are dating. Later, when they find Takaji alone, they ask her about it. She confirms that she is dating Nishikata, and later Mina intercepts our protagonist to tell their friends that she knows the truth about his relationship with Takaji. Because of this, Nishikata corners Takaji and asks her why she told Mina and her friends that they are a couple. Takaji replies, asking him to walk her home so he can find out why she said that. So minutes later, the two protagonists walk home. Nishikata tries to tease Takaji to get her to reveal the truth about what she told Mina, but unfortunately, it's Takaji who ends up teasing him with embarrassing questions. In one of these questions, Takaji asks if he would prefer a kiss from her or getting zeros on all his exams. Nishikata blushes at the question, and although he would like to choose the second option, he admits that he would feel safer with the first one. After this, Takaji moves closer to him, and he gets nervous, thinking she wants to kiss him. However, for better or worse, nothing happens as Takaji merely approaches to compare their heights. The next day, our protagonist tries to pet a cat on his way to school, but unfortunately, the cat runs away before he can pet it. That's when Takaji arrives, and as expected, she saw what Nishikata was trying to do moments earlier. So as they walk to school, she stops to pet her neighbor's cat. Nishikata is amazed by how friendly the cat is with Takaji, as it lets her pet every part of its body. This fills him with great envy because he also wants to pet the cat. Takaji asks him if he wants to pet the cat, and he lies saying that he doesn't like cats. Takaji doesn't believe him, so she teases him to get him to admit the truth. 
Ironically, Takagi quickly realizes that Nishikata is eager to pet the cat, so she steps aside to give him a chance to do it. The problem is that when our protagonist tries to pet the cat, it runs away. Hours later, the protagonists are in their art class. Both Takaji and Nishikata are drawing each other. This is a great opportunity for our protagonist to prank Takaji. He draws her as a wild, demon-like girl, and when he shows it to her, she looks confused. Takaji makes a funny face, which causes Nishikata to laugh out loud. Afterward, she asks him to try and capture her expression better next time, paying attention to every detail of her facial expressions. After hearing this, Nishikata feels disappointed that his plan failed. As if that weren't enough, Takagi shows him the portrait she made of him. She drew him as a shy and nervous boy, which bothers him a lot, especially when she adds his typical blush on his cheeks as the finishing touch. After class ends, our protagonist is ready to go home, but this time, he can't leave because he first has to clean the classroom. When Takagi finds out about this, she suggests they play rock, paper, scissors, where if she loses, she will keep him company and help clean the room. Nishikata agrees, and to his surprise, Takaji loses the game, so he is happy that she lost for the first time. As they clean the classroom, Takaji reveals to Nishikata that she lost on purpose because she knew he would pick paper. She explains that she knew his move because Mina and her group predicted the future using tarot cards. But that's not all, as Mina and her group also told her that both she and Nishikata would have good luck and love. So without hesitation, Takaji asks our protagonist if he's in love with any girl. Nishikata blushes and says that he doesn't have anyone in mind, but as he overthinks the situation, he comes to the conclusion that maybe he's in love with her. On a new day, Nishikata arrives happy to class, as his horoscope for the day says it will be his day. Because of this, he believes he will finally be able to prank Takaji, but to his surprise, she already knew he was a cancer, so she had predicted he would try something against her. Nishikata feels down because of this, but he remembers the horoscope's phrase for the day, you'll land a critical hit only if you dare. Thanks to this phrase, the protagonist gathers his courage and tells Takagi that he loves walking home with her. Seconds after saying this, he regrets it as he said something truly embarrassing and cheesy, which causes him to blush so much that, out of shame, he decides to run away and leave Takagi alone. After Nishikata leaves, Takagi blushes for the first time because his words really touched her and moved her heart, making her walk home happy. On a new day at school, Nishikata receives a love letter. He suspects that the letter is from Takagi, and since it's from her, he assumes it must be some kind of prank. While he tries to think of why Takaji would write him a love letter, she notices how nervous he is, so she asks if something's wrong. He tries to act like everything is fine, but the blush on his cheeks says otherwise. For this reason, Takaji teases him in various ways. At one point, she notices that he has his book closed, which means he has already read the love letter she wrote him. She then reveals that she wrote the letter and encourages him to read it. Nervous that it might be a prank, Nishikata opens the letter. It simply reads, Let's walk home together. This simple phrase makes our protagonist even more nervous, and as expected, he blushes deeply. Afterward, he shouts at Takaji, saying she could have asked him to walk home in person instead of doing it through a love letter. Unfortunately, by doing this, Nishikata is scolded by Professor Tanadi, which makes Takaji laugh at the situation. Putting that aside and rewinding a bit, let's go back to the first day of school. Before the ceremony for the new students began, Nishikata arrives late to class. He tries to explain to the teacher that he was late because he had to do something, but the teacher completely ignores him and tells him to sit down. Nishikata sits near the front but is forced to change seats by the teacher's order. His new seat is in the back next to Takaji. They don't know each other yet, but Takaji is quite social, so she doesn't hesitate to ask him why he was late to class. He tells her he was late because of someone named Takagi. She's surprised by this, so after the ceremony, she arrives late to class as well. She then tells Nishikata that she'll try to find out why he was late to class. The boy agrees and Takagi quickly guesses. She knows he was late because he had to deliver an item to the lost and found. Nishikata is shocked by this and it causes him to yell out, prompting the teacher to call his attention. The reason Takagi knows this is because the lost item Nishikata turned in was none other than her personal handkerchief. Returning to the present, Nishikata still has Takagi's handkerchief, which she gave him when she hurt her knee. He tries to return it the next day, but he can't, as she's feeling too down because by Professor Tanabe's orders, all the students must change seats through a lottery. In the lottery, Takaji gets the number 4, meaning she must sit at the front, while Nishikata gets number 29. Because of this, they'll be very far from each other, but they aren't the only ones separated. Nakai and Mano are also moved apart. Mano feels sad because she can't sit next to the boy she likes, but then a miracle happens. Kimura doesn't want to sit at the front because he doesn't want Professor Tanabe to see a meeting. So he switches seats with Nakai. Mano, on the other hand, switches with Takaji, so now she and Nakai are together again. 
At the same time, Mishikata gets to sit next to Takagi again, as she was the one who switched seats with Mano. Nishikata is happy to be next to Takagi once more, and now that they're together, he gives her back her handkerchief. He thanks her for lending it to him and also for switching seats with Mano as he admits that he really likes being close to her. Takaji blushes and tells him that she hopes to stay by his side for the rest of her life. Hours later, Takaji admires her handkerchief, and as she unfolds it, she notices a small note coming out of it. When she opens the note, she reads, Thank you for the handkerchief. This message melts her heart and her love for Nishikata grows even more. Season 2, on a new school day, Nishikata forgets to bring his English book. This alarms him since today they have English class. Luckily for him, Takaji offers to help by lending him her book, but for this, they'll have to push their desks together. Nishikata doesn't want to be near her, so he sets out to find an English book around the school. However, no matter how much effort he puts into his search, he can't find anyone to lend him an English book. As a result, he has no choice but to move his desk closer to Takagi's and share her English book. When class begins, Nishikata becomes very nervous being close to Takaji even more so when she writes in the book, It's fun being close to you. This makes our protagonist blush deeply, and as a result, Professor Tanabe calls him out. Tanabe asks Nishikata to translate a word from English to Japanese, and the boy correctly translates the word victory with a little help from Takaji. After this, Nishikata gets an idea while reading the English vocabulary words. He writes a letter with a random message, but when read vertically, it says, I'm an airhead. Nishikata gives this letter to Takaji, hoping she'll fall into his trap, but ironically, she doesn't. Instead, she writes a similar letter, and when read vertically, it says, I won. This once again crowns Takaji as the queen of pranks, and our boy is someone easy to read. Shortly after this, Takagi writes another letter, but this time it contains a love message for Nishikata. When he reads it, he blushes, and because he doesn't believe the content of the letter, he tries to decipher a secret message, which causes Takaji to laugh since she didn't include any hidden message. On another day, Nishikata shows Takagi a pendulum he invented by following the advice from a TV show. Takagi is amazed and asks him to try the pendulum on her. Nishikata, nervous, agrees, he says a hypnotic phrase while moving the pendulum back and forth, and although at first Takagi takes it lightly. When Nishikata finishes the phrase and stops moving the pendulum, she is completely hypnotized. Nishikata doubts that Takagi is actually hypnotized, so he asks her to do several embarrassing things. She does every single one, which makes him laugh greatly. After that, he asks her to pick her nose as this would make her look very embarrassed in front of him. Ironically, before Takaji can do this, she brings her hand to Nishikata's ribs to tickle him, revealing that she wasn't hypnotized after all, as she was just pretending. Mina, on the other hand, was really hypnotized while watching the hypnosis TV show. This, combined with her lack of sleep, let her act like a dog in front of Sime and Yukari. Later, our protagonists go to the river to play a game where they throw stones into the water and the winner is the one whose stone bounces the most times. Nishikata is an expert at this game because, after all, he brought Takagi here just to watch her lose. After picking his stone, Nishikata throws it, but at that moment, Takagi distracts him by saying she can make her stone bounce 30 times. This interruption by Takagi causes Nishikata to get no bounces at all with his stone. When it's Takagi's turn, she manages to make her stone bounce three times, claiming victory. However, since she knows her victory wasn't fair, she challenges him to his second round. In this second round, Nishikata looks for a new stone. Finding the perfect one, he grabs it enthusiastically. The problem is that, in doing so, he accidentally pushes Takaji, and she almost falls into the river. Luckily, this doesn't happen, as our boy grabs her hand to prevent her from falling, but in the process, it's him who ends up falling into the river. After this, the two walk home awkwardly, since it's the first time they held hands, even though it was just by accident. As a result, Nishikata feels that losing the stone gain was worth it because, whether he wanted to or not, he got to hold Takaji's hand, even if just for a second. On a snowy day, our protagonists come across a large puddle of frozen water. Nishikata is impressed by this, almost like a child which amuses Takaji. Because of this, she proposes a game. Whoever manages to carry the biggest chunk of ice from the frozen puddle to school wins. Nishikata accepts and confidently picks up a large piece of ice, sure that he will win this game since he has always been good at enduring the cold. Along the way, Takaji distracts Nishikata, causing him to drop his piece of ice, but luckily, he manages to catch it in time, so the game continues. At one point, Takaji tells Nishikata that the loser will have to warm the winner's hands as punishment. Hearing this, Nishikata gets so nervous that he can't stop himself from dropping his piece of ice, which shatters into a thousand pieces, knocking him out of the game. Takaji laughs at the situation and tells him that it's time to face his punishment. She extends her hand, and Nishikata nervously does the same. 
Before they can hold hands, Takagi asks Nishikata for his hand warmer, and shyly he gives it to her. The next day, Nishikata proposes a game to Takagi. He asks her to guess what visible change he made to his body. Nishikata is confident that Takagi won't be able to guess, as it's just a small cut in his hair. When the game starts, Takagi doesn't hesitate to get very close to Nishikata, inspecting every part of his body and crossing personal space boundaries. Clearly, Nishikata blushes deeply, as not only is Takagi very close to him, but she also tickles him and even sniffs him. Because of this, Nishikata can't handle the embarrassment and decides to stop the game, but not before asking her what she thinks the change was. Takagi quickly guesses that the change was in his hair, and she guessed easily because hair, along with nails, are the only parts of the body that can change quickly. In this way, Takagi wins the game Nishikata proposed, but since she enjoyed the game so much, she tells him that next time she will change something on her body to play the same game with him. A few days later, Valentine's Day arrives and Nishikata desperately hopes to receive some chocolate from Takagi. First, he checks his locker, but finds nothing. A little later, he waits for Takagi to give him chocolate during class, but she doesn't do that. The most she does is ask him for his eraser. This leaves Nishikata hopeless. On the other hand, Mina became the queen of Valentine's Day, as she gave chocolates made by her to all her classmates. The problem was that Professor Tanabe hates Valentine's Day, so he immediately confiscates Mina's chocolates, leaving her very sad. Someone else who is also sad is Mano. She desperately wants to give Nakai chocolate, but she lacks the courage to do so. When she asks Takagi for advice, Takagi tells her that giving chocolate to someone she likes isn't difficult, revealing that she already gave her special someone chocolate, but she did so discreetly. This gives Mano the courage she needs to give her chocolate to Nakai. Unfortunately, Nakai is busy chatting with his friends and they make the situation childish by teasing Mano, which causes her to run away as quickly as possible. When Nakai finds her, he asks why she ran away so suddenly. She replies that she ran because she was embarrassed by the situation, and she explains that she just wanted to give him chocolate for Valentine's Day. Hearing this, Nakai gets excited and says he will accept her chocolate if she gives it to him now. Mano hands it over, but just then, Tanabe shows up to confiscate them. Luckily, this doesn't happen as Nakai convinces Tanabe that the chocolate package is actually a book. Thanks to this, Tanabe leaves them alone and now Nakai can enjoy Mano's delicious chocolates. At the end of the day, the only ones who didn't receive chocolate on Valentine's Day are Nishikata and his group of friends. Before heading home, Nishikata checks his locker, and to his surprise, he finds a box of chocolates. This makes him blush. Shortly after, Takaji arrives and asks him who he thinks left the chocolates there. Nishikata is sure it was her, but she plays with his mind and personally gives him a chocolate. As a result, Nishikata is left in shock because if Takaji gave him a chocolate personally, who was responsible for leaving the box of chocolates in his locker? On April Fool's Day, Nishikata strategically plans a way to prank Takaji. He first invites her to the neighborhood candy shop, under the excuse that there is a special sale on exotic candies that day. When they arrive at the store, Nishikata is stunned, as he had made up the story about the exotic candy sale. But to his surprise, the sale is real. Because of this, he has no choice but to enter the shop with Takaji. Although he comes up with a new plan to prank her, she is always one step ahead, as she knows the exact moment Nishikata lies or plans something. After she makes him try several exotic candies with unpleasant tastes, she asks him not to lie from now on. Nishikata agrees, and after that, she puts her plan into action to tease him. Takagi asks him, have you ever blushed because of me? Ironically, Nishikata blushes and admits that he has. She then asks him another question. Would you like to be in the same class next year? Takagi tells Nishikata that she heard from Sane that second year students will have to change classes due to school rules. At first, Nishikata feels happy because if he changes classes next year, he will have the pleasure of not having Takaji next to him bothering him. However, this thought turns into something sad when Nishikata realizes that if another girl enters his life instead of Takaji, nothing will ever be the same. So without lying, Nishikata reveals to Takaji that he would love to be with her next year. Takaji is happy about this, but then reveals that what she said was just a lie to tease him, as second year students don't actually change classes. Going back in time, we return to the first days of Nishikata's first year at school. Since he met Takaji, she hasn't stopped teasing him after finding that he is a very shy and easy to read boy. Because of this, he plans a way to intimidate Takagi so she stops bothering him. Thanks to his friends Takao and Kimura, he comes up with a perfect plan to intimidate Takaji, calling her by her first name. One day after school, she says goodbye to him, calling him Nishikata-kun. In response, he simply says goodbye to her, calling her Takaji. This leaves her deep in thought and she scolds him for it. Nishikata gets nervous, so he calls her Takaji-san. She immediately teases him about it, asking why he suddenly called her Takaji-san and not just Takagi. 
Nishikata replies that he called her Takaji-san to maintain formality between them and says that he will never call her by her first name again, as they are not close. Takaji laughs at the situation and tells him that he can just call her Takagi whenever he wants because there is plenty of trust between the two. After that, she says goodbye to him again, but this time calling him simply Nishikata. Returning to the present, Nishikata doesn't plan to just stand by after the way Takaji treated him during his first days of school. Now that he's about to enter his second year, he decides to take a more mature attitude. He follows the advice from his forbidden love manga, and once he enters his new classroom, he asks Takaji not to tease him anymore now that he's a senior. She agrees but tells him she will ask him several questions to see if he really is a mature boy. The first question Takaji asks is, are you in love with someone? Nishikata avoids the question in a mature way, thanks to the advice from his forbidden love manga. Ironically, Takaji could predict this, so she asks several more questions, all based on the manga that Nishikata is reading. When Nishikata realizes this, he knows that the next thing coming is a romantic approach between the protagonists of the manga, and since he doesn't want to go through that with Takaji, he decides to stop the game. Despite this, Takaji continues with the game and starts calling him Nishikata Senpei, which causes him to get furious and call her by her first name. This makes Takaji blush, since he had never called her that before, always calling her Takaji-san. She then asks him to call her by her first name again, but ironically, he goes back to calling her the same way as always, Takaji-san. She laughs at this because she noticed that Nishikata isn't able to call her directly by her first name. As a result, she tells him that she won the game to prove who is more mature in this new school year, and since she won, she tells him that from now on, he should call her Takaji-senpai. A few days later, Nishikata beats all his friends in the arm wrestling game. This is thanks to the many push-ups he's done for over a year every time Takaji teased him. When Takaji sees how Nishikata beats his friends, she challenges him after school. In the first round, Nishikata takes the lead because while he uses minimal strength, Takaji uses all her strength to try and beat him. Because of this, he becomes soft-hearted seeing Takaji putting in all her effort, which causes him to lower his guard. This small mistake makes him lose as Takagi was pretending to use all of her strength just to make Nishikata drop his guard. In the second round, Nishikata decides to use all of his strength against her from the start. The problem is that at one point, she makes him nervous by mentioning that her hands are sweaty. Because of this, he gets distracted and Takaji wins again. Since Nishikata lost both rounds, he has to buy her a drink on the way back home. Before Nishikata buys Takaji a drink as punishment for losing the arm wrestling game, he buys a coffee for himself. He bought this drink because Kimura told him that coffee is something only adults and mature people drink. When Nishikata tries the coffee, he makes faces of disgust as he doesn't like the taste at all, finding it too bitter for his liking. Takaji suggests rinsing his mouth with the coffee to make it taste sweeter, but this is just a joke and Nishikata ends up suffering even more from the bitterness of the coffee. Afterward, he asks Takaji to choose a drink for her, and she picks the simple and delicious melon soda. Nishikata is tempted to take a sip of Takaji's drink, especially when she offers it to him. She lets him know that if he drinks from her soda, it would be like giving her an indirect kiss. Because of this, Nishikata finishes his coffee and refuses to drink Takagi's melon soda. After that, she tells him that he doesn't need to drink coffee to appear more mature, as when they grow older, she will still make an effort to keep teasing him, no matter what age or maturity level he reaches. On a new day, Nishikata notices that Takagi isn't riding her bike as usual. Remembering the previous day, Nishikata suspects that Takaji didn't bring her bike because the brakes are broken. Knowing this, the boy tells Takagi that he knows why she didn't bring her bike today. She tells him to tell her the answer, and if it's wrong, she won't hesitate to tease him. Nishikata is about to say his answer, but Takaji takes him for a walk around the neighborhood, passing by some stairs, a game of hopscotch, and a view of some cute cats. This causes Nishikata to doubt his answer, but he still decides to tell her. He says that the reason she didn't bring her bike today is because the brakes are broken. Takaji tells him that his answer is incorrect. The truth is that she didn't bring her bike just to see how nervous he would get while trying to come up with an answer. After that, Takaji laughs at him as he fell into her trap once again. However, she also lets him know that there is another answer he could have guessed. Nishikata asks what that answer is, but she refuses to tell him, making it clear that he will find out in time. A few days later, Nishikata ignores Takagi so she won't tease him, thanks to the advice he followed after watching a movie called Dandy of the Old West. Ironically, Takaji watched the same movie, so she didn't hesitate to attack him by tickling his ribs, knowing that's his weak spot. After this, Nishikata proposed a question game, to which Takaji agrees, but she makes it clear that for every question, he doesn't answer or answers incorrectly, she will attack his weak spot. Takaji is the first to ask questions, and all of them are related to love. 
As expected, Nishikata gets so nervous that he's unable to answer a single one of her questions, so Takaji tickles him over and over again. A few days later is our protagonist's birthday. His mom is the first to congratulate him on this special day and lets him know that she has already bought his birthday cake. The problem is that the cake is still at the bakery, so he has to go pick it up. On the way to the bakery, he runs into none other than Takaji, so he has no choice but to go into the store with her. Before Nishikata picks up his birthday cake, Takagi asks for his place in wine and he gives it to her, hoping she'll do her business and leave as soon as possible so she won't see him pick up his cake. She buys a few things then hands them to him, wishing him a happy birthday. Nishikata then goes back home with his birthday cake and a mysterious bag that Takaji gave him that day. After placing the cake in the fridge, Nishikata runs to his room, where he opens the bag Takaji gave him. Inside the bag, there were a couple of sweet cookies and a special gift that Takaji had thoughtfully picked for him, a necklace featuring the female protagonist from the Forbidden Love manga. The next day, Nishikata sneezes despite the good weather. Because of this, he believes someone is spreading rumors about him as in Japan, there is a belief that if someone sneezes without being sick, it's because someone else is spreading rumors about them. Takaji suspects that Yukari and her friends are responsible, and ironically, she guesses right, as on the other side of the map, we see Yukari, Sene, and Mina talking about the possible relationship between Ishikata and Takaji. As a result, Takaji also sneezes, and she firmly believes that Yukari and the others are talking about her and Ishikata. Upon hearing Takaji sneeze, Nishikata thinks of a way to tease her, but he can't, as Takaji sneezes in really cute him. This makes him blush, especially when Takaji comments that Yukari is spreading rumors about them. After this, he touches his pocket and accidentally makes the sound of the necklace Takaji gave him. Because of this, he has no choice but to take out the necklace and show it to Takaji. He shyly thanks her for the gift. To this, Takaji responds that it's no problem and lets him know that the necklace is something she chose very carefully for him. On a new day, Nishikata challenges Takagi to a game. Since they're in physical education class, he dares her to score higher than him in the physical tests, exclaiming that if he wins, she must stop teasing him and making jokes. Takaji agrees, but only on the condition that if she wins, she will be able to tease him for life. Both agree to the deal, so they put in a lot of effort in the physical tests. Nishikata gives it his all to get the best scores in each and every test, and he succeeds thanks to over a year of training at home. In the flexibility test, Nishikata scores poorly, while Takagi scores the highest, a perfect 10. Because of this, Nishikata decides to put all his effort into the final test, the grip strength test. He focuses his mind on using all of his strength on the apparatus that measures the strength of his forearm, but then Takagi interrupts him. She cheers for him by repeatedly calling his name, and after encouraging him, she advises him to use all of his strength by imagining he's holding her hand. Nishikata imagines holding Takagi's hand, which causes him, instead of using all his strength, to use none at all. As a result, he scores poorly on the grip strength test. Because of this, he tells Takagi that he gives up and is ready to acknowledge her as the winner of the bet. She is happy about this, so she shows him her grade sheet from all the physical tests, where Nishikata sees that she scored low in all the tests and therefore could have beaten him. But since he gave up after failing the last test, all of his efforts in the physical tests were in vain. Later, after school, our protagonists meet on a playground to play dodgeball. At first, Nishikata feels confident that he can beat Takaji, but he didn't account for the fact that she has the ball. On her first attempt to tag Nishikata with the ball, she distracts him by telling him to look at the wall. He blindly agrees to do this, giving Takaji enough time to throw the ball and win the game. After this, Nishikata asks for a second round, which Takaji accepts. In this second round, Takagi throws the ball without any tricks, so Nishikata tries to catch the ball to avoid losing the game. He jumps and touches the ball, but unfortunately, he fails to catch it, and the ball continues its course, hitting the ground. As a result, Nishikata loses the second round against Takaji, though the good part is that she lets him know that she's happy he tried to catch the ball, as she thought he wouldn't. In another scene, Yukari, Sene, and Mina buy sweets at the neighborhood candy store. While Sene and Mina enjoy the sweets they bought, Yukari saves hers to eat later. Because of this, Sene approaches Yukari to provoke her hunger. Mina, after finishing her candy, is surprised to find that she won a free candy, so she claims it at the store and gives it to Yukari. She's happy about this and finally decides to eat. When she opens the candy package, a wild cat suddenly charges at her and steals her candy. As a result, the group of friends is forced to chase the wild cat all over the neighborhood. During a chase, the first to fall behind is Yukari as she can't pass under a narrow fence. Then Mina falls behind because she can't climb a ravine. This leaves Sene as the only one capable of catching the wild cat. After an intense chase, Sene finds the cat, 
But seeing that it stole Yukari's candy to feed her kittens, she decides not to intervene and leaves the cat alone. Back with our protagonists, after their dodgeball game, they decide to go to the candy store to buy some sweets to recharge. Takaji takes on an adult role and tells Nishikata that she will pay for all the sweets he chooses. He's surprised by this, so in an attempt to make her regret acting like an adult, he picks an expensive ramen. This backfires on him as Takaji decides to buy herself some ramen as well, and while they eat, she doesn't hesitate to tease him by saying that it seems like they're on a date. Because of this, Nishikata spits out the ramen noodles and blushes from Takaji's remarks. To make matters worse, Takaji teases him by saying it would be a shame if their classmates saw them in this context because they might think they're actually on a date. Nishikata doubts any of his classmates will show up at the store, but just then, Takao and Kimura enter the store. At first, they glance at Nishikata, and after buying their sweets, they glance at him again without saying a word. Nishikata expected Takao and Kimura to ask him about his situation, but ironically, they simply ignore him, which is a complete relief for our boy. After this embarrassing scene, Nishikata feels more nervous than usual since his friends left without him being able to explain why he's eating ramen with Takaji. She on her part is happy about this as she could see from Nishikata's eyes that he didn't want to tell his friends anything because deep down he would have loved to say that he's on a date with her. Takaji expresses this to Nishikata, leaving him speechless. Weeks later, our protagonists have a field trip as an essential activity for second-year students. The first activity is to take a group photo with Professor Tanabe. Before the photographer can take the picture, Nishiketa plans to place his hand on Takagi's shoulder to make her think it's a ghost. Unfortunately, while trying to do this, Takagi distracts him, causing him to burst out laughing, and in the end, it's him who ends up looking bad in the photo. Putting this aside, our protagonists proceed with the second activity of the school trip, mountain climbing. This time, they are accompanied by Nakai and Mano. As the group climbs the mountain, Mano looks displeased because she wanted to be alone with Nakai. When Nishikata notices the angry look on Mano's face, he realizes it's best to leave her alone with Nakai. Luckily for Nishikata, Takaji takes it upon herself to lead him away and leave Mano alone with Nakai, knowing she wanted that. As they continue climbing the mountain, it suddenly starts to rain, so they take shelter in a small cabin. Here, Nishikata proposes a game to Takagi to avoid getting bored while waiting for the rain to stop. Nishikata's game is for Takaji to guess the candy while blindfolded. She agrees to participate, showing great confidence, which causes Nishikata to doubt. It turns out that Takaji expects Nishikata to feed her the candy directly into her mouth, something he refuses to do, as the very thought of his fingers touching Takaji's lips makes him nervous. Despite this, Nishikata gathers the courage to give her the candy in her mouth, but to avoid his fingers touching her lips, he gives her some chocolate sticks. Unfortunately for him, she manages to guess the candy correctly, as they're the only ones with a vertical shape. As a result, she wins the game that Nishikata proposed. This frustrates him, so he plans to come up with a new game where he can win. At this point, Takagi feels sorry for him and tells him that if he wants to win any game, he can win in the game of holding her hand. Takagi suggests this because she knows Nishikata wouldn't dare to do it, but to her surprise, Nishikata agrees to play her game. Nishikata agrees because, in the next activity, the dance in front of the bonfire, it's normal to hold hands with the person next to you. Because of this, he believes he can win against Takaji in her game. To his surprise, she mentions that she heard a rumor that if he holds her hand in front of the bonfire, they will be destined to be a couple. As a result, Nishikata becomes nervous and isn't as sure about holding Takaji's hand anymore, which means he could lose again to her. When the bonfire dance activity begins, all the students participate, so Nishikata will have to dance with several girls before reaching Takaji. After dancing with several of his classmates, Nishikata finally reaches Takaji, but unfortunately, he can't hold her hand as Professor Tanabe mistakenly ends the dance, thinking everyone has danced with their partner. As a result, Nishikata loses the game with Takaji, though she doesn't seem to enjoy her victory because she really would have liked to dance with him. A little later, it's bedtime. While the other students are camping and preparing to sleep, Nishikata decides to sneak away to clear his mind. When he reaches a small ravine, he finds Takagi, who is admiring the stars. Nishikata asks her what she's doing, and she replies that she's making a wish to the stars. Suddenly, she notices Professor Tanabe approaching, so she tells Nishikata. He doesn't believe her, but when he turns around and sees the professor, he panics. Takaji hides under a rock and asks Nishikata to join her. While the two are hidden, Tanabe patrols the area with his flashlight and not detecting anyone awake, he decides to retreat. After this, Takaji feels relieved and tells Nishikata that hiding from the professor was a very exciting activity. Nishikata blushes when he hears this, so he changes the subject, asking her what wish she made to the stars. Takagi replies that she wished to see the stars together. 
At this, Nishikata blushes, and although at first he doesn't believe in her wish, he soon realizes that her wish has already come true. After a basketball and volleyball match, the physical education teacher asks our protagonists to take the balls to the gym storage. Once they arrive, Nishikata notices that the storage room feels a bit scary. Because of this, he closes the door and pretends he can't open it to scare Takagi and make fun of her. To his surprise, Takagi isn't afraid of the dark, so while waiting for someone to open the door, she organizes the storage. Afterward, she takes a small break, and Nishikata sees this as an opportunity to set up a trap to scare her. Unfortunately, it takes him too long to set it up, and when Takagi gets up from her break, she teases him, saying that others might misunderstand the situation if they see them together in the dark storage. As a result, Nishikata gets nervous and ends up tripping. After this, he goes to the door to open it, but to his surprise, it won't open. He panics, thinking they're locked in, but Takaji tells him they aren't, revealing that she put a broom to block the door in order to tease him again. When they leave the storage, the protagonists head to class. At that point, Takaji notices that Nishikata hurt his knee from the fall in the storage. Because of this, she decides to take him to the nurse's office. Once there, Takaji realizes that no adults are present, so she tells Nishikata that she'll take care of his wound. Nishikata, nervous, agrees. Takaji promises not to make fun of him while treating the injury, but proposes a game. She says that if he can endure the pain while she treats him, he wins the game. Otherwise, she wins and will give him a challenge. The game begins and Takaji treats Nishikata's wound. Although he initially thought it would hurt, luckily it doesn't. As a result, he believes he's won the game Takaji proposed. However, she tricks him into saying the word pain with subtle hints. Once he says it, Takaji tells Nishikata that he lost the game. Realizing this, Nishikata feels disappointed in himself for falling into Takagi's trap. Despite her victory, Takagi tells him that if he wants to reverse his loss, he has to hold her hand. This makes Nishikata extremely nervous, to the point that he stands up and hurts his knee again, causing him to finally express pain. Takagi laughs at this because without any tricks, she truly won the game. Days later, Kimura tells his friends that he won 500 yen from a lottery ticket. This surprises everyone, especially Nishikata. He doesn't believe he could ever be lucky enough to win even 100 yen, so he thinks the only way to make money is through work. While walking home with Takaji, she tells him that to have a good life, you need at least a million yen. Nishikata believes her and starts calculating how many years it will take to make that much money. Takaji laughs at him as he counts the years on his fingers. After this, she asks him what he would do with the million yen he plans to make in his lifetime. Nishikata replies that his dream is to buy all the video games and manga in the world. Takaji teases him, saying his wish is a bit childish. Nishikata then asks her what she would do with a million yen, and she answers that she would buy a lot of clothes. Upon hearing this, Nishikata silently teases her, thinking that in the end, they would both spend all their money on personal pleasures. Ironically, Takaji continues, saying she would also like to spend her money traveling with the person she likes. Besides traveling, Takagi mentions that she would love to spend her money on food to enjoy it with her future partner. While saying this, Takaji remembers the upcoming summer festival and asks Nishikata if he plans to go. He responds that he does, as he's looking forward to eating cotton candy and shaved ice. She's happy that Nishikata is excited about the festival, so she continues asking him more questions about it. At this point, Nishikata senses that Takaji plans to invite him to the summer festival, so he preempts her and says he's willing to teach her how to play the festival games when summer comes. Takaji doubts him, not believing that Nishikata has the skills to win the festival games. He reassures her that, although he's unlucky with the lottery, he's lucky at games, and if given the chance, he's sure he could win more than a million yen playing festival games. Takagi simply laughs at this, finding Nishikata's statement hilarious. On a new day, Nishikata arrives at school feeling happy because he thinks today he will finally get his revenge on Takagi. Upon entering the classroom, he challenges her to a game called Look Over There, which involves looking in a different direction from where the challenger points. Confident that Takaji will look down, he points downward with his hand. However, Takaji looks to her left, so Nishikata's plan fails. In the second round, Takaji wins rock, paper, scissors, making her the challenger. Without hesitation, she distracts Nishikata by asking him questions, and when she points downward with her hand, he instinctively looks down. As a result, he loses the game, and as punishment, she suggests they continue playing. In the third round, Takaji wins rock, paper, scissors again, making her the challenger once more. She distracts Nishikata by asking him if he likes her. Nervous about the sudden and surprising question, Nishikata overthinks the situation, leading him to want to look down instinctively. But since he suspects Takagi will point downward, he decides to look up. Ironically, she points upward, so once again, he loses the game. Nishikata doesn't plan to give up. 
That's why the next day he brings a surprise box to scare Takaji. Upon arriving in the classroom, she greets him, and he returns the greeting. Afterward, Nishikata prepares to give Takagi the surprise box, but for some strange reason, he can't bring himself to do it, noticing that Takagi seems lost in her thoughts. During the break, he can't help but notice that Takagi seems down, and by the end of the day, she didn't tease him at all. This leads him to think that maybe Takagi is going through an emotional rough patch. On the way home, Nishikata notices that Takagi's bike is at the entrance of the city shrine. He enters the place and finds Takagi behind the shrine. He asks her why she's there, and she replies that she needed some time alone. Nishikata plans to leave so as not to disturb her, but in the process, he accidentally drops the surprise box he had prepared for her. Takagi picks up the box, opens it, and finds a huge mountain of cotton candy. She suspects that he prepared this to scare her, but in reality, it only makes her laugh. Conveniently, the surprise box brightened Takagi's day because, it turns out, she wasn't in the best mood that day after having a fight with her mother. She thanks Nishikata for the gesture and tells him that if he wants to make her feel better, he should stay with her. He agrees, and after that, she takes advantage of being in a good mood to tell him that she wants to tease him for life. At nightfall, Takagi texts Nishikata to tell him that she was able to resolve her issues with her mother. Nishikata is glad, but now that he's texting her, he won't hesitate to tease her however he can. Nishikata tries everything. First, he sends her a photo of his arm from an angle that looks like an adult thing. Secondly, he asks uncomfortable questions, but none of it works, so he resorts to the ultimate move, asking her if she likes kisses. This question is a double-edged sword because he's not referring to human kisses, but to the way fish breathe, making the same gesture as a kiss. Unfortunately for Nishikata, Takaji doesn't respond, which makes him nervous because he starts to believe that she thought his question referred to human kisses. After a while, Takaji responds by sending him a video where she says, I love kisses. As a result, Nishikata blushes deeply, and since Takaji suspects this, she asks him to send her a photo. He refuses to send it, and the conversation ends there. Takaji would have loved to see Nishikata blush because, to our surprise, she also blushed when Nishikata asked her that question. Days later, Takaji notices that Nishikata doesn't seem to have slept well the night before. She offers him some eye drops that will help him stay awake. Nishikata takes the eye drops and tries to put a tiny drop in his eye, but he can't do it because he's afraid of the sensation the liquid produces in his eyes. Because of this, Takaji offers to put the drops in his eyes for him, but as a game. Takaji tells him that if she manages to put at least one drop in his eye, she will win the game. Nishikata agrees, and since he doesn't want to lose such a simple game, he decides to just close his eyes to prevent Takagi from putting the drops in his eyes. She doesn't just sit there, though, and starts tickling him, which allows her to put the drops in his eyes. As a result, she wins the game, but it doesn't end there. She later asks Nishikata to now put the drops in her eyes. Takagi sits down and closes her eyes, waiting for Nishikata to put the drops in her eyes. He gets nervous and blushes, but since he doesn't want to lose the game again, he gathers the courage to try to put the drops in her eyes. Before he can do so, Yukari suddenly enters the room and seeing them in such a compromising position, misunderstands the situation and nervously runs away. Outside the classroom, Yukari meets Haoju, a student from another class. Yukari sees Haoju as a mature girl, and that's why she asked her to spy on Nishikata and Takaji. Haoju agrees to do this, and when she sees the two of them playing so sweetly, she blushes, revealing that she's not as mature as she seemed. Later, Yukari tells Mina and Sane what she saw in the classroom, highlighting that, in her opinion, Nishikata and Takaji are dating. Maina and Sane doubt Yukari's words and make fun of her. Later, our protagonists gather in a courtyard to play hide-and-seek. Nishikata feels confident that he will be able to beat Takaji, so he decides to hide behind a couple of barrels in the yard, thinking that Takaji will search for him far away from the courtyard. Ironically, she finds him in less than a minute, so now it's Takaji's turn to hide from Nishikata. Unfortunately for both of them, Huju arrives in the courtyard with her classmate Hamaguchi, who is interested in her. While the two are on a kind of date, Takaji and Nishikata remain behind the barrels. Nishikata plans to leave his hiding spot to let Hoju and Hamaguchi enjoy their moment alone, not wanting to ruin it for them. Takaji agrees, so she helps him leave by moving her hand closer to his. Upon this, Nishikata blushes deeply and ends up coming out of hiding, not because he wanted to, but because Takaji forced him to do so. As a result, our protagonists have no choice but to leave the courtyard and continue their way home. On the way, Takagi finds a strange map that marks a possible treasure. With Nishikata's help, she embarks on this long journey to reach the final destination where the treasure is supposedly hidden. The final destination is an ancient tree, which has a phrase related to love written on it. 
Upon inspecting the map, Takaji realizes that the journey to this place wasn't about finding a physical treasure, but about finding the spot where many couples declared their eternal love. With this in mind, she sits beneath the tree and talks to him about what couples do under that tree. Nishikata becomes extremely nervous, especially when Takaji slowly approaches him. He thinks she's about to kiss him, but what Takaji actually wants to do is give him her headphones, so they can listen to music together. At first, she lets him listen to the sounds of her cats as a joke, but then she picks the perfect music for both of them to enjoy while they watch the sky. The next day, Nishikata accidentally runs into Takaji. Obviously, this isn't an accident as he knew that Takaji would pass by the street that leads to the candy store. He proposes a game to guess how many steps it takes to reach the light pole. Takaji agrees and Nishikata can already smell victory since the day before he had counted how many steps it takes to reach the light pole. Unfortunately for him, Takagi changes the rules of the game as she had accepted thinking that Nishikata was referring to the distant light pole. With this rule change, Nishikata is no longer sure he can win, but he still decides to give it a try. As they count their steps, Nishikata realizes that he might be able to win since Takagi's steps are short. Knowing this, he believes that 72 steps are needed to reach the light pole, but before he can give this answer, Takagi distracts him by asking several questions. She suspected from the start that their meeting wasn't pure coincidence, so she lets him know that if he had been spying on her the day before, it means he's a stalker. Nishikata blushes because Takaji makes a good point. He tries not to think about how he unknowingly acted like a complete stalker, but then she brings him back to reality by reminding him that the guessing game is still on. Ironically, they both lose track of their steps and neither wins. Nevertheless, this works out well for Takaji as she was about to leave to do some things. She tells Nishikata that she will go on a trip with her family the next day, and that he can ask for anything. And she'll bring it to him with pleasure. Nishikata blushes and tells her that it's not necessary for her to bring him anything, as he doesn't want to bother her on her family trip. Two days later, Takaji returns from her family trip, and although Nishikata had asked her not to bring him any gifts, she took the trouble to get him a limited edition ramen from the manga Forbidden Love. Nishikata is happy with this gift and not wanting to be impolite, he gives her a box of candy that he brought back from his family trip. These candies are bitter, because he chose them to tease Takaji. She has no idea about this, as the packaging doesn't mention the taste. Nevertheless, Takaji is glad that Nishikata bought her a gift during his trip, because it showed that he thought about her while he was away. In response, Nishikata blushes and decides to leave so that Takaji doesn't see him blushing, but before he can leave, she asks him to go to the shrine to eat the candy he bought her. On the way to the shrine, Takaji repeatedly expresses how happy she is that he bought her a gift. She tells him that it's not the gift itself that makes her happy, but the fact that he thought of her during his trip. At these words, Nishikata gets nervous and, as usual, blushes. His conscience weighs on him, so he reveals to Takaji that the candy he gave her is bitter. She laughs and says she saw them coming, which is why she asked to go to the shrine to try them together. Once at the shrine, Takaji forces Nishikata to try the bitter candy, and she laughs at the expressions he makes while tasting them. Afterward, she confesses the truth about the fight she had with her mother. It turns out that Takagi wanted to return from her family trip before the first day of the festival because she wanted to spend the festival with the boy she likes. Nishikata understands and asks her who the boy is. Takagi responds with a simple phrase. The boy I like is someone who I like to tease. With this simple sentence, Nishikata blushes and is left speechless. The next day, Nishikata rides his bike toward the river where his friends are waiting for him. On the way, he runs into Takaji and seeing that she is carrying a couple of bags, he decides to help her carry them. Nishikata accompanies her to her house and along the way they have several interesting conversations. One of them is about the summer festival. When Takaji arrives at her house, she thanks Nishikata for helping her with her bags and as a token of appreciation, she gives him a can of soda. He accepts the soda and after that, he continues on his way to the river. Before Takaji can enter her house, Nishikata appears again to ask her for something. Shyly, he invites her to the summer festival. Takaji blushes at this, and since she had hoped this would happen, she accepts his invitation without hesitation. Takaji is so happy that she decides to give him all the sodas she bought and lets him know that she is looking forward to the day of the summer festival. Nishikata, nervous about the whole situation, leaves with all the sodas Takaji gave him. A little later, Nishikata shares the sodas with his friends at the river, and although they are happy about it, they can't help but notice that Nishikata seems to be lost in thought obviously because he invited Takagi to the summer festival. A few days later, the day of the summer festival arrives. Nishikata waits for Takagi at the candy store. She arrives seconds later wearing a yukata. Once they meet, they head straight to the festival. On the way, Takagi teases Nishikata by saying they look like a couple. Nishikata gets nervous about this and even more so when some kids tease them by calling them couple. 
Because of this, Nishikata thinks that only the kids see them this way and he's sure that adults and teenagers don't think of them as a couple. In response, Takaji says she's willing to bet to prove that, according to her, most people see them as a couple. Ironically, an elderly couple sees them and labels them as a couple. For Nishikata, this doesn't count because he wants the bet to start once they reach the festival. Once they arrive, the protagonists buy caramel apples and unfortunately for Nishikata, the vendor thinks he and Takaji are dating, so he tells them they make a lovely couple. As a result, Takaji wins the bet and his punishment, she asks Nishikata to do something like a couple. The activity they do is catching goldfish. Nishikata focuses on trying to beat Takaji, since he's playing competitively, not cooperatively as Takaji wanted. Nishikata catches a goldfish, and while it seemed like he was ahead, Takaji surpasses him by catching two goldfish. Once again, Takagi beats Nishikata in a game. After the game, Takagi takes Nishikata's goldfish and along with her own, gives them to a little girl. Later, Takagi continues her punishment of Nishikata, this time forcing him to feed her food by hand. Nishikata gets nervous about this, and although he tries to feed Takagi, his fear of doing couple-like things stops him. After this, the two continue to explore the festival. While they do this, Nishikata spots Yukari and her friends in the distance. He hides from them so they don't think he and Takagi are on some kind of date. The problem is that by doing this, Nishikata loses sight of Takagi, but it doesn't take long for him to find her again. Now that they're reunited, the two head to the next festival game, hook shooting. Nishikata makes the highest score of 5 points and just before he can claim his victory, Professor Tanem appears behind him to greet him. As expected, Nishikata gets startled just hearing Tanemi's voice, causing him to drop the hoop and score only one point. Still, Nishikata is able to claim his prize. The game vendor lets him choose whatever prize he wants and he chooses a hairpin, which he immediately gives to Takaji. She thanks him for the gesture, and since she also played the hoop game, she gives him a scary mask. Later, the two continue to explore the festival. Nishikata spots his friends Kimura and Tako, so he puts on the mask so they won't recognize him. Unfortunately, this is in vain as his friends recognize him even with the mask on. They greet him and seeing that Nishikata is carrying a bag, Kimura decides to leave them alone. Suddenly, the fireworks start and conveniently, the two protagonists lose sight of each other. Nishikata searches everywhere for Takagi but can't find her. She, on the other hand, goes up to the festival shrine, hoping to see Nishikata from there. As he searches everywhere, Kimura helps him by pointing him in the direction of the shrine. Nishikata runs as fast as he can to the shrine and just before he arrives, Takagi spots him from a distance and quickly approaches him. The fireworks end and everyone can return home. Nishikata, shyly, takes Takaji's hand and tells her that he never wants her to get lost again, exclaiming that he doesn't want anything bad to happen to her. She's happy to hear this, as it's the first time he's been affectionate with her. After that, the two go down the stairs hand in hand. Nishikata is training his grip strength with a specially designed device. Upon seeing this, Takagi starts teasing him, saying it doesn't make sense for him to train his grip strength if he can't demonstrate his strength in some way. In response, Nishikata shows her that he can demonstrate his strength by taking her hand. As he does this, Nishikata begins to relive the moment when he held Takagi's hand at the summer festival. He tries to snap back to reality, but the fact that he held Takagi's hand drives him crazy. He starts imagining Takagi in many different forms, and as if that weren't enough, his reality distorts and he imagines the main characters of his forbidden love manga as real. On top of that, he imagines Takagi as a cow, and then as a cowgirl. In this form, Takagi aims at Nishikata's heart and pulls the trigger of her weapon. As a result, Nishikata falls to the ground. But fortunately, he wakes up. It turns out that everything he just experienced was nothing more than a product of his imagination. On a new day, our protagonists meet up for their last day of vacation. Takaji specifically asked Nishikata to have one last outing together before school starts, but she didn't tell him the reason for the outing. As a game, she asks him to guess the reason for the outing. If Nishikata fails, Takaji will give him a pat on the back. This punishment came to her after Nishikata told her that he had sunburned his back too much on a beach day. Back to the game, Nishikata fails on his first attempt to guess the reason why Takaji invited him. As a result, she gives him a pat on the back, which though soft, hurt quite a bit. On his second attempt, Nishikata tells Takagi that the reason she invited him was to tease him, as usual. Takagi responds that his answer is not entirely wrong, but it's still not the correct one. She moves closer to pat him on the back, but he protests, telling her that his answer is valid since she said it's not entirely wrong. Tahaji decides not to give him a pat on the back and ends the game. Nishikata gets upset about this because he feels his effort to guess the reason for the outing was in vain. He insists that she reveal the reason she invited him, to which she responds that there's no need to say anything because she invited him for this very reason. 
to spend time with him. Hearing this, Nishikata gets so nervous that he blushes and seeing him like that, Takagi wastes no time in making him blush even more by saying that she would love to dream about him, just like he dreamed about her this morning. The next day, our protagonists meet up to go to school. On the way, Nishikata gives Takagi a surprise box, hoping to scare her. She doubts that she will be scared, so she decides to make a bet. If she manages to make a surprise expression, Nishikata wins, otherwise he loses and will have to buy her a soda as punishment. Nishikata agrees to the bet and encourages Takagi to open the surprise box. She opens it very slowly and suddenly a bright burst of light shoots out of the box. Takagi is surprised, so Nishikata wins the game. He mocks her for losing, but he didn't consider that Takagi was surprised because fireworks suddenly appeared in the sky. After that, she extends her hand for Nishikata to take it, just like at the summer festival. He approaches to take her hand and reveal his feelings, but then Takagi is pulled away by an invisible force. It turns out the whole scene was just a dream of Takagi's, although she wished it hadn't been because she really longs for Nishikata to reveal how he truly feels about her. Later, Takagi leaves home to go to school and on the way, she encounters Nishikata. They greet each other, and after that, Nishikata tells her that he has a surprise for her. Remembering her dream, Takagi guesses that Nishikata's surprise is a box he plans to use to scare her. This makes Nishikata nervous, and he drops the box because he never thought Takagi would guess his surprise so quickly. Takagi approaches the box and picks it up. She laughs at the situation because, although she couldn't guess Nishikata's surprise in her dream, she was able to do so in real life. On a new day, Nishikata is secretly followed by Takagi as he heads to school. Nishikata knows she's following him, so he takes every opportunity to try to catch her, but it doesn't work as Takagi always manages to hide just in time. Eventually, Nishikata finds a pearl and plans a mischievous prank to tease Takagi once he finds her. Takagi, however, saw him pick up the pearl, so she decides to come out of hiding and make her presence known. As they walk to school, Nishikata carries out his plan. He asks Takagi to guess the mysterious object in his pocket. Takagi quickly guesses that it's a pearl, which greatly disappoints Nishikata, causing him to drop the pearl on the ground. In another scene, Yukari is secretly following Mina. Mina senses someone is behind her and turns around but finds no one. Yukari continues to follow Mina until they reach a yard where Mina gets distracted by an insect. Yukari watches from a distance, but to her surprise, Mina notices her as Yukari stands out due to being tall. Mina and Yukari meet up and head to class. Mina tells Yukari that she felt someone following her. It turns out the person who is following her, and still is, is none other than Sane. In class, Takaji tells Nishikata that today the teachers will conduct a desk inspection. Nishikata panics, worried about getting in trouble for having something inappropriate in his desk. Takaji calms him down, offering to be the first to check his desk. Nishikata agrees and Takagi plays the role of a teacher as she inspects his desk. She finds nothing out of place, but since perfection is unattainable, she teases him by pretending to find an adult magazine. After this, Nishikata checks Takagi's desk. It's the perfect opportunity for Nishikata to get revenge and play a good prank on Takagi. Unfortunately, he doesn't find anything in her desk, but he suspects she's hiding something inside her gym uniform. Nishikata tries to inspect her uniform, but Takaji makes him nervous by starting a countdown. When the countdown reaches zero, she informs Nishikata that his time is up. She then pulls a manga from her gym uniform and hands it to Nishikata, revealing that the desk inspection was just a trick to tease him. Hours later, the protagonists are assigned to look after the library. Nishikata finds it a boring task. To pass the time, Takaji suggests that they each pick a book for the other. Takaji chooses an illustrated dinosaur book for Nishikata, while he picks a boring novel for her. As they read their respective books, Nishikata can't help but notice how cute Takaji looks when she's focused. When she realizes Nishikata is watching her, she says something peculiar, I love you. This causes Nishikata to blush intensely. Takaji continues adding a romantic phrase to compliment her, I love you, only for Nishikata to realize that she was quoting a passage from the novel she was reading. On another new day, Nishikata has developed the habit of jogging through the city. He encounters Takaji along the way. He proudly tells her that he jogs every day and mentions that he once jogged all the way from his house to the beach. Takaji is impressed as the distance between the two places is quite large. This makes her doubt that Nishikata actually ran that far from his house. Nishikata isn't about to let Takaji's skepticism go unanswered. He runs as fast as he can to the beach, and once he arrives, he takes a photo and sends it to Takagi to prove that he really can run from his house to the beach. When Takagi sees the photo, she's more focused on the beautiful sunset than on the fact that Nishikata made the effort to prove his point. Regardless, she worked hard to get to the beach as quickly as she could on her bike, and after giving Nishikata a bottle of water to recharge, she tells him she's impressed with his physical abilities. 
Mr. Kata blushes and tries to act like he didn't hear anything, but his face shows the joy of finally being able to beat Takaji at something. Though this victory isn't entirely sweet as Takaji is more focused on enjoying the sunset with him, which means Nishikata can't fully enjoy his win. On a warm day, Nishikata arrives at school with a fan to keep cool. He plans to tease Takagi for not bringing a fan, but to his dismay, she ends up making him fan her. Nishikata refuses, so Takagi proposes a game. The game involves using the fan to move an eraser, and whoever moves it the farthest will win. As a penalty, the loser must fan the winner. Nishikata agrees to play, putting all his strength into fanning the eraser. Although he manages to move it by a centimeter, Takagi wins by using her wits. She simply pushes the eraser with the fan, something Nishikata could have done himself. As a result of losing, Nishikata fans Takagi. She's delighted and takes advantage of his defenseless state to get closer to him and make him nervous. A few days later, Takagi catches Nishikata's striking poses from a baseball manga. He asks her to keep it a secret and Takagi agrees, but only on the condition that he beats her in a pretend baseball game. Nishikata accepts and prepares to throw the ball. In his first attempt, he succeeds in making Takagi miss, but on his second throw, he gets distracted and pitches so weakly that Takagi easily gains the upper hand. She hits the ball hard and wins the game. Despite her victory, Takagi promises not to tell anyone what she saw today if he lends her his baseball manga. Nishikata agrees, telling her not to get too excited, as she'll probably not like it. Takagi doesn't mind. She just wants to learn about Nishikata's interests. The next day, Mina and her friends find a cat on their way to school. Sane notices that the cat appears to be stuck between two walls and points it out to her friends. Being the tallest, Yukari takes the initiative to try to free the cat, but ends up wedged between the walls herself. Mina helps her get unstuck, and just as they start brainstorming solutions, it suddenly begins to rain. They take shelter under the roof of the candy shop. While waiting for the rain to stop, they spot the kitten freeing itself from its trap. The girls then realize the cat wasn't stuck at all. It was simply resting as cats do. Later in class, Nishikata is anxious about the rain. Not having brought an umbrella, he decides to run out as soon as the bell rings. He borrows an umbrella from school and with it leaves and walks home peacefully. On the way, he begins overthinking and finds his thoughts drifting to one thing, Takaji. He regrets not saying goodbye to her before leaving, though his regret isn't as strong as his excitement about getting home in time to watch the special episode of the anime adaptation of his baseball manga. But guilt gnaws at him and unable to shake it, he decides to return to the classroom. There he finds Takaji, and although he doesn't say it outright, he lets her know he came back to walk her home. She's thrilled, appreciating that Nishikata went out of his way to pick her up, especially since he had an important appointment with his baseball and I'm. As they walk down the school hallway, she teases him, saying that from now on, she'll forget her umbrella on purpose so he'll be forced to accompany her home. Nishikata blushes and asks her to stop joking about that. Takagi replies that she was just kidding. A few days later, winter arrives, and with it, our protagonists have to start wearing their winter uniforms. Nishikata follows the school rule, while Takagi doesn't, because of this, Nishikata proposes a game to Takaji. The game is simple. If he can get her to say the word cold, he wins, otherwise she'll be the winner. When the game begins, Nishikata tries to prevent Takagi from saying the word cold throughout the whole class. It's only on the way home that Nishikata tries to get her to say it unconsciously. Unfortunately for Nishikata, Takaji doesn't fall into his trap. She tells him she knows what he's up to and admits she'll only say the word cold if he dares to warm her up with his hands. Nishikata blushes at her words and not only does he not dare to do it, he decides to forfeit his own game, making Takaji a winner once again. The next day at lunch, Nishikata is forced to eat alone since neither Takao nor Kimura attended school that day. Fortunately for him, Takaji decides to join him. Though her company comes at a price, the bet him part of his lunch. Nishikata is willing to bet his fried chicken, as long as Takaji is willing to bet her fried lotus roots. They both agree to bet their food, and when the game starts, Takagi asks Nishikata to guess the filling in the rice ball she's about to eat. Nishikata guesses salmon, because he noticed something pink on the other rice ball in Takagi's lunch. She tells him he's wrong as the rice ball she ate had plum inside. With this, Nishikata once again loses a bet against Takagi, but this time he feels particularly disappointed because his fried chicken paid the price. Despite her victory, Takagi decides to be fair with Nishikata and offers him her fried lotus roots. She picks them up and moves closer to Nishikata to give them to him. He thinks she's about to feed him, but she simply puts them on his plate. After lunch, Nishikata admits he had fun because of her company. Takaji is pleased to hear this and tells him that next time they eat together, she'll feed him, since she noticed he wanted her to do that. A few days later, Takao tells his friends that he managed to capture an authentic UFO photo. His friends believe him until Sane arrives to reveal the truth. 
She knows the UFO photo is fake because she saw Takao trying to take a picture of a rock the night before. Despite this, Nishikata was so impressed by the UFO photo that he decided to try to recreate it. Unfortunately, Nishikata isn't able to recreate Takao's photo, even with Takagi's help. While the two try to take the UFO photo, Nishikata manages to snap the perfect picture and shows it to Takagi. She's stunned as a UFO can clearly be seen in the photo. She then looks up at the sky and actually sees a real UFO. This leaves her astonished, although she didn't completely believe in UFOs, now that she's seen one and Nishikata has proof, she decides to believe. At nightfall, Nishikata goes to the public baths to wash up since his home's bath is under repair. While bathing, Nishikata thinks about Takagi and feels that she could appear at any moment since he mentioned to her that he was going to the public baths. After finishing his bath, Nishikata decides to buy a drink and head home. While he's buying his drink, Takagi appears behind him. She tells him she arrived at the public baths before him and was waiting for the right moment to appear behind him. Moments later, the two start walking home, and on the way, Nishikata suggests a game to Takagi. The game is to make the other person blush. Since it's nighttime, Takagi suggests getting closer to see if the other is blushing. She moves closer to Nishikata, making him blush. You could say Nishikata lost the game, but he makes the excuse that the game hadn't actually started yet. Before the game can officially begin, the protagonists must go their separate ways home. Nishikata offers to walk Takagi home. She blushes upon hearing this, though Nishikata doesn't notice due to the darkness. After this, Takagi tells him not to worry and points out that only couples walk each other home. One day, Nishikata can't help but feel disappointed. Takagi asks him why he's feeling that way, to which Nishikata says it's nothing. The real reason Nishikata feels disappointed is because his mom put green peppers in his breakfast even though she knows he hates them. Nishikata doesn't want Takagi to know this because he knows she'll tease him by calling him immature. Ironically, Takagi figured out the green pepper situation because Nishikata accidentally mentioned that he didn't feel like eating his breakfast. She teases him by calling him a kid and tells him that, as he grows up, they'll have to eat things he dislikes. At this, Nishikata starts to wonder what Takagi might hate. As a result, he proposes a guessing game where he'll win if he can figure out what she dislikes. Following Takagi's hints, Nishikata makes his guess, pineapple. But to his surprise, that's not the right answer. Takagi reveals that the thing she hates is soda and lets Nishikata know he could won the game if he had thought of something instead of a specific food. The next day, Yukari, Sanang, and Mina, as important members of the Cultural Festival Committee, reveal to their classmates that this year they decided the main activity will be a romantic play. They choose Romeo and Juliet and use a detailed model to explain the whole story of the play. After that, it's time to decide the roles. Yukari thinks Takagi is perfect to play Juliet. Mina, Sane, and the rest of their classmates agree, so Takagi ends up with the role without even trying. However, the role of Prince Frog Romeo is still open. Yukari doesn't know who to choose, so she decides to hold auditions. During the audition, all the boys are rejected. And when it's Nishikata's turn to show his acting skills, he gets nervous. Despite this, Nishikata gives a good performance to show Takagi that he can be a prince if he wants to, even if it's just to tease her. Yukari and Mina are impressed by Nishikata's performance and decide to give him the role. Sene, however, was more impressed with Kimura's performance than Nishikata's. Because of this, she decides to give the role of Romeo to Kimura. They, along with Nishikata, feel disappointed by this decision. After that, our protagonists go to a pond where Nishikata proposes a new game to Takagi. The game is essentially about catching as many fish as possible. Nishikata is confident Takagi won't be able to beat him in this game as he knows she has never tried fishing. Ironically, she catches two fish in less than a minute, leaving Nishikata speechless. She says she must be having a lucky day as she's never held a fishing rod in her life. At this, Nishikata assumes her luck won't last long, so he tries to get ahead. Nishikata casts his fishing rod and quickly catches a fish. Unfortunately, the fish Nishikata catches is a huge one, and he struggles to pull it out of the pond. Because of this, Nishikata almost falls into the pond, if not for Takagi jumping in to hug him and keep him from falling. Afterward, the fish manages to free itself from the fishing rod, and Nishikata is left in shock from Takagi's sudden hug. Later, as the two walk home, Nishikata can't stop thinking about what happened, feeling his heart race from Takagi's hug. Setting that aside, he feels disappointed about losing the game he suggested. Takagi claims her victory and tells him that, as a penalty, he must help her practice her role as Juliet. Days later, all the students are busy preparing for the cultural festival. The second-year students are practicing for the play Romeo and Juliet. Kimura does a good job as the prince pig Romeo, but he also does things that get on Yukari's nerves like making up new lines. Although Yukari doesn't like this, Sane fully supports Kimura's new ideas, so Yukari's opinion has no sway in the play. 
Meanwhile, Nishikata is practicing his role as the Japanese fruit superhero Kippy Dango. He gets nervous seeing Takagi wearing the Juliet costume, which prevents him from delivering his lines correctly. Because of this, Yukari scolds him and tells him to practice more. Later, Nishikata asks Takagi to meet him on the rooftop, without telling her exactly why. Takagi agrees and Nishikata is pleased. As he heads up to the rooftop, he realizes he hasn't explained why he wanted to meet her there. He wanted her to help him practice his lines, but he gets nervous at the thought that Takagi might think he called her there for another reason. When he reaches the rooftop, Nishikata gets ready to tell Takagi he asked her there to help him rehearse his lines for the play. Unfortunately, he lost his script along the way, which makes him nervous as Takagi slowly approaches him to say something. She pulls out her script and says she wants to practice with him, as she's also having trouble learning her lines in the part where the superhero Kibi Dango appears. Takaji knows he thought she was going to say something else, but since that wasn't the case, she laughs at the situation. After this, the two get to work and start practicing their lines. The next day, the school's cultural festival begins. Nishikata, planning to prank Takaji, sneaks into the haunted house game. He wants to go through the haunted house as many times as necessary so that when he enters with Takaji, she'll be more scared than he is. Ironically, Takaji surprises him by appearing behind him, and having overheard his plan, leaves him with no ideas. The only thing he can think of is to have her go into the haunted house first and manage to escape in record time. She agrees, and after entering, it takes her about 43 seconds to exit. After this, it's Nishikata's turn. Before he can gather the courage to enter, Takaji fills him with fear by telling him there's a real monster inside the haunted house. She explains that this monster can pull him into its world if it touches his shoulder four times. Filled with fear from her story, Nishikata enters the haunted house, feeling as though he's being chased. While several fake monsters scare him when he feels his shoulder touched three times, he's so frightened he falls to the floor. To his great surprise, it turns out it was Takagi who had touched his shoulder, and she teases him along with the haunted house monsters. Later, the Romeo and Juliet play begins. Takagi and Kimura do a good job as the protagonists, making the entire audience, including Tanab, laugh. In the next scene, Haoju, playing the Mage of Light, guides them to the Island of Demons, where they can be safe from the Dark Wizard, played by Takao. When they arrive at the Island of Demons, Romeo and Juliet meet the bizarre superheroes, one of whom is Nishikata. Playing the superhero Kibi Dango, Nishikata successfully delivers his lines, and after this scene, he can rest since he won't appear again in the play. The play continues, and when Romeo and Juliet encounter the Dark Wizard, he casts a spell on Romeo, turning him into a ham. Kimura spins around on stage and exits the scene. Unfortunately, spinning made him so dizzy that he feels like vomiting, so Nishikata takes over his role. Juliet is about to take her life after losing Romeo, but she accidentally trips. Because of this, Nishikata, dressed as Romeo, jumps on stage to stop her from falling. He accidentally drops his pig mask along the way, so he's forced to improvise the play's ending. Nishikata confesses his love to Takagi as part of the play, and she plays along, hugging him and calling him Prince. Nishikata blushes, and suddenly, the curtain falls, bringing the play to an end. This unexpected, improvised ending leaves Yukari and her friends more than satisfied, while Tanabe, on the other hand, can't help but shed tears. With this, the cultural festival comes to a close, and to celebrate the success of Romeo and Juliet, the students gather to sing karaoke set up themselves. As for our protagonists, they talk about their performances in the play. Takaji can't help but tell Nishikata that she wasn't acting when she called him Prince. Hearing this, he blushes and gets nervous, and before he can say anything, Takaji is called by Mina and her friends to sing at the karaoke. On a new day, Takaji sends a message to Nishikata telling him she's out walking her dog. Nishikata loves dogs, so he can't resist quickly leaving his house to accidentally run into Takaji. Once they meet up, they walk around the neighborhood together. Nishikata really wants to hold Takaji's dog's leash, but he doesn't say anything, fearing she might tease him about it. Ironically, Takaji offers him the dog's leash, saying her puppy loves to run. With this information, Nishikata doesn't hesitate to run alongside Takagi's dog, and once they reach the shrine, he pets the dog. A few minutes later, Takaji catches up, and with the three of them reunited, they head back home. Along the way, Nishikata's face shows his happiness at having achieved his goal, walking Takagi's dog. She feels happy seeing this, as she loves to see Nishikata cheerful. Besides this, Takaji is happy, for another reason, and she asks Nishikata to guess what it is. He gets nervous, and the only answer that comes to mind is that Takaji is happy, because she got to go out with him. Nishikata doesn't say this explicitly, but instead stays silent, letting his face show what he's thinking. The next day, while Takaji and Nishikata are heading home after school, Nishikata realizes he forgot his homework at school. So he says goodbye to Takaji and heads back to retrieve it. 
Luckily for him, Takaji decides to go with him. When they arrive at school and notice several students still there, Takaji comments to Nishikata that most of those students are couples who got together thanks to the cultural festival. This makes Nishikata nervous as he's worried his classmates might see him with Takagi and think they're a couple. Just then, Takao and Kimura show up, and since Nishikata doesn't want them to see him with Takaji, he hides in the boys' bathroom and sneaks out through the window. After that, Nishikata re-enters the school, this time without Takaji but unfortunately, he runs into her again in the classroom. Nishikata picks up his homework and is ready to go home when he's suddenly surprised by Nakai and Mano. When they see Nishikata with Takaji, they suspect they're a couple and decide to leave them alone. This makes Nishikata nervous and he wants to leave the school as soon as possible. But Takaji insists he stay to do his homework with her. Nishikata blushes intensely at this suggestion, and Takaji laughs at him for being so nervous. The next day, our protagonists are assigned to work in the library again. While Nishikata reads a book about dogs, Takaji takes a needle and thread from her bag and begins knitting. Takaji's skill at knitting surprises Nishikata, and this sparks his curiosity to try knitting himself. Takaji lends him an extra needle and thread and explains how to knit. Nishikata gets confused by her instructions, so she decides to get closer and teach him by holding his hands and guiding him on how to make the right movements. Nishikata blushes because of this, so he puts his curiosity aside and tells Takagi he no longer feels like learning to knit. She understands and can't help teasing him about how red his face is after she got so close to show him how to knit. After that, Takaji continues knitting, and Nishikata's curiosity resurfaces. He asks her if she's knitting. Takaji replies that she's knitting a scarf for someone special. Nishikata assumes that Takaji is knitting the scarf for her mother or father. When he tells her this, she responds that he's wrong, as the scarf is for someone who's 15 years old. Upon hearing this, Nishikata is shocked as he had no idea Takaji knew an older boy. While Nishikata is lost in thought, wondering who this person could be, she sends him a photo of a dog and says that this dog is the 15-year-old she's knitting the scarf for. Nishikata returns to normal and, as usual, blushes. Takaji watches him and explains that this dog is special to her, because it belongs to her neighbor. On a new day, our protagonists take an alternate path and decide not to go home after school. The alternate route is a hill with many steps, which Nishikata chose. Takaji has no idea why Nishikata invited her to climb the hill, which helps Nishikata carry out his mischievous plan. Nishikata plans to challenge her to guess how many steps there are from the beginning to the end of the path, and to prevent Takagi from counting them, he distracts her by talking about different topics. When they reach the last step, Takaji is surprised to see the lovely view of the city from the hill. She asks Nishikata if he brought her there to show her this beautiful view, to which he says no. He reveals that he brought her here to propose a riddle. He asks her how many steps there are from the beginning to the end of the path. Takaji correctly answers that there are 415 steps. Nishikata is stunned by her response and asks her how she guessed the number of steps. She responds that it wasn't hard, as this hill is a tourist attraction, and it's common knowledge how many steps it has. Since she won Nishikata's game, Takagi proposes coming back to the hill soon. Not to play, but to do couple-like activities, as this hill is also known for bringing couples together. The next day, Hamaguchi and Huju visit the famous hill with 415 steps. After a long climb, they reach the top. Once there, Huju gets nervous as she suspects Hamaguchi might mention the rumor about the hill being known for forming couples. Ironically for her, Hamaguchi ignores this topic and says he brought her here just to enjoy the nice view of the city. Huju blushes, and although she was about to mention the rumor herself, she avoids the topic not wanting Hamaguchi to see her as a girl who believes in rumors. Nakai and Mano also visit the hill. Mano can't help feeling that Nakai is ignoring her, so she asks if he likes her. He replies that he does, but in a detached way. Because of this, Mano doesn't believe Nakai's words and tries to make him write their names in the hill's couple notebook. Nakai doesn't want to do this, leading Mano to think it's because he doesn't actually like her. Nakai assures her that this isn't the case and reveals that he doesn't want to write their names in the couple notebook because he's already done so before. When Mano sees her and Nakai's names in the couple notebook, she's thrilled and now feels certain that Nakai will be the love of her life. On a new day, our protagonists visit a DVD rental store. Nishikata wants to rent the movie of his forbidden love manga, but since he has someone to watch it with, he decides to look for another movie. While searching for movies he might like, Nishikata finds the sequel of Dandy of the Old West. He plans to rent this movie, but seeing that it's already out of stock, he feels disappointed. Because of this, Takaji suggests they look for movies to recommend to each other. Nishikata recommends a futuristic-themed Old West movie. He accidentally reveals the entire plot, but even so, Takaji still wants to see the movie he chose for her as Nishikata picked it just for her. 
For her part, she recommends a romantic movie with plenty of action scenes to Nishikata. He's delighted with her choice, as he loves action movies. Faced with Takadi's excellent movie choice, Nishikata feels down for having spoiled the story of the movie he picked for her. He tries to make up for his mistake, but Takaji doesn't let him. Instead, she asks him to come back to the store another time, so they can recommend movies to each other again. Nishikata watches the movie Takaji recommended and can't help but cry at the touching ending. Afterward, he prepares to watch another movie, but Takaji sends him a message. The message is a picture of the Forbidden Love movie poster. Nishikata blushes at this, realizing that Takaji knew all along that he wanted to rent the movie of his favorite manga. After this, he shyly sends her a message asking to watch the movie together. After what happened, Nishikata has a strange dream where Takaji, dressed as Santa Claus, gives him a special gift. This gift is a surprise box which ends up scaring Nishikata so much that he wakes up from his dream. The next day, Nishikata and Takagi board the Shikoku Ferry. After a long journey across the sea, the protagonists arrive in the Shikoku region. They came here to see the premiere of a forbidden love manga movie of which Nishikata is a fan. Before watching the movie, they take some time to play in the claw machines. Nishikata challenges Takaji and she accepts. Nishikata tries to grab a puzzle, but the claw is not on his side. Takaji, on the other hand, manages to grab a couple of plush dolls of the protagonists from the Forbidden Love manga. She doesn't hesitate to give them to Nishikata, knowing how much he loves those characters. After this, the protagonists print their movie tickets, and before entering the theater, they buy a popcorn set that includes a special gift. This gift is two figures of the movie's protagonists. When Nishikata and Takagi put the figures together, it creates a cute and tender scene from the movie. Setting that aside, the movie begins and our protagonists pay close attention to what's happening. At the end of the movie, Nishikata can't help but cry uncontrollably at the sweet ending. Later, Nishikata and Takagi leave the cinema and walk through the streets. At this point, Takagi proposes a game. Whoever gets to the streetlight first wins. Nishikata tries hard, and to his surprise and ours, he manages to beat Takaji. Because of this, Nishikata feels happy and capable of beating Takaji at any game. He flips a coin in the air, catches it with one hand, and asks Takagi a guess which hand the coin is in. She chooses the left hand, and Nishikata reveals that the coin was in his right hand, so she lost once again. Because of this, Nishikata feels unstoppable and powerful, as he finally managed to beat Takaji, not once, but twice. Later, they both visit the Shikoku Christmas tree. Takaji trips and accidentally pushes Nishikata. He asks her if she's okay, since she's been acting strange since leaving the cinema. She reveals that she's fine and admits that she had been pretending to be the female protagonist from the Forbidden Love movie just to check if Nishikata likes clumsy women. Nishikata blushes at this and can't believe Takaji had faked a personality. While it didn't bother him, he was annoyed that he had beaten her twice when she wasn't really herself. After this, the Christmas tree lights up, and with it comes Christmas. Nishikata gives Takagi a pair of gloves, as he noticed that every time it was cold, she tried to warm her hands with her breath. Takaji is happy with Nishikata's gift and also gives him a present. She gives him a blue scarf, which Nishikata remembers Takaji had knitted in the library. Takaji doesn't think it's necessary for Nishikata to wear the scarf right now, as she sees him blushing. A few minutes later, the protagonists board the ferry again, this time heading back to their hometown. Once they arrive and walk toward their respective homes, Takagi bids Nishikata farewell. A few days later, New Year's Eve arrives. Nishikata and Takagi meet to go to the temple, where they make their wishes for the new year. Nishikata wishes that Takagi won't tease him this year. Takagi asks him to tell her what he wished for, but Nishikata refuses. Ironically, Takagi says she already knows he wished for her not to tease him in the new year. This makes Nishikata blush, feeling frustrated that Takagi ruined his New Year's wish. Because of this, Nishikata tries to guess Takagi's wish for the new year but fails. Before he can keep trying, Takagi receives a call from her mother. She says goodbye to Nishikata, telling him she's happy she guessed his wish. Nishikata replies that next year, he'll do everything possible to guess her wish. This makes Takagi happy since Nishikata indirectly said he wants to make New Year's wishes with her again next year. The next day, they have a snowman building contest. Nishikata works hard to make the biggest snowman in the world, while Takagi makes a small, well-decorated snowman. Nishikata struggles with his snowman because he can't attach the head to the body since the snowball he made is too heavy for him. Because of this, time runs out and Nishikata loses the snowman contest. As the winner, Takaji decides to help Nishikata finish his snowman. Once they complete it, Takaji can't help but think that her snowman and Nishikata's look like a cute and mismatched couple. Months later, the protagonists and their classmates return to school. During a break, Huju calls Nishikata aside to speak with him discreetly. She asks him about Hamaguchi's preferences because his birthday is approaching, and she wants to give him something special. 
Nishikata tells her that Hamaguchi doesn't want anything in particular, but would be very happy if she made him some of her famous homemade cookies. Haju blushes at this and thanks Nishikata for the tip. Before leaving, she asks him not to tell anyone about their conversation. Later, Nishikata and Takagi walk home after school. Takagi asks him what he and Haju talked about, since she saw them speaking. Nishikata says he can't tell her because he promised Haju he wouldn't mention it. Even so, Takagi quickly guesses that their conversation was about Hamaguchi. This makes Nishikata nervous, and he denies that his talk with Hoju was about Hamaguchi. After this, Takaji tells him she plans to give a special gift to someone who is 15 years old. Nishikata asks if that someone is her neighbor's dog, whom she once told him about. Takaji tells him no and reveals that the 15-year-old is him. This makes Nishikata blush and he opens up to her, apologizing for not being able to tell her about his conversation with Hoju. In response, Takaji also apologizes, admitting she was secretly watching the conversation between him and Hauju, even though she knew it was a toxic and childish behavior. A few days later, Valentine's Day arrives. Nishikata is shocked to find three boxes of chocolates in his locker. He assumes Takaji left them there, but he decides not to open them, suspecting it might be some sort of prank. Upon closer inspection, Nishikata finds a note that says, I fell in love with you on the day of the cultural festival. Please accept these chocolates as a token of my love for you. This message, along with the unfamiliar handwriting, makes Nishikata nervous and confused. Because of this, he tries to hide the chocolates from Takagi's view. She suspects Nishikata is hiding something from her but stops thinking about it when he suggests playing a game where they have to speak in numbers. Takagi wins the game, and as punishment, she asks Nishikata to show her his homework. He gets nervous at this request because if he shows her his homework, he'll also have to show her the chocolates he received since both are in his bag. Luckily for him, Takaji decides not to insist on seeing his homework and seems a bit sad, which catches Nishikata's attention, as it's unusual for her not to bother him. In another scene, Mina gives handmade chocolates to Sine and Yukari. Unfortunately, the chocolates melted because Mina accidentally left her hand warmer in the bag with them. Upset, Mina cries because she wanted to impress her friends with her chocolates. Sine and Yukari comfort Mina, telling her they're happy to have received chocolates from her. Later in class, Nishikata can't help but notice that Takaji seems distant since she isn't teasing him like usual. Because of this, he suggests a game. Unfortunately for him, the game is interrupted by Tanabe, who scolds Nishikata for not paying attention in class. The upside of this is that Takaji, due to Tanabe's scolding, can go back to being her usual self, which cheers Nishikata up immensely. Minutes later during break, three first-year girls frantically search for Nishikata. They ask him about his chocolates, which makes him nervous, so he decides to give them to them. He thanks them for the gesture, but tells them he can't accept their chocolates. Ironically, the girls are relieved Nishikata doesn't accept the chocolates, as they weren't for him, but for their friend named Shibazaki. Although Nishikata felt embarrassed by the incident, he is at least relieved that he has nothing to hide from Takaji, although he wonders where she might be. After class, Nishikata keeps wondering where Takaji is, and while walking home, he passes by the shrine and spots her bike. Nishikata walks into the shrine and finds Takagi in the back. The two feel uncomfortable and can't interact properly. Nishikata breaks the ice by telling Takagi about the embarrassing misunderstanding he had with the chocolates today. In response, Takagi asks him not to mention chocolates at all because she was anxious about them today. Takagi doesn't want Nishikata to tell her about other girls giving him chocolates even by accident. She wants to be the only one to give him chocolates. She apologizes for being distant that day, and to make up for it, gives him a box of chocolates, but he's disappointed when he opens the box and finds dried sardines instead of chocolates. This turns out to be one of Takagi's pranks and she can't help but laugh at Nishikata. Still, she gives him real chocolates and tells him that next Valentine's Day, she'll leave them in his locker. The following day, Hamaguchi reveals to his friends that he's determined to confess his love to Hoju. He challenges Nishikata to do the same with Takagi. This makes Nishikata extremely nervous and he asks why he should do that. Hamaguchi responds that he should do it because he's afraid of being the only one doing something as embarrassing as confessing his love to a girl, and as his friend Nishikata should support him and not let him do it alone. Nishikata reflects on the confession he needs to make to Takaji. He isn't sure if he has feelings for her, but as he recalls all the sweet moments they shared, he realizes he feels something more than just friendship. Takaji can't help but notice that Nishikata seems distracted and deep in thought, so she teases him, trying to find out what he's thinking about. She guesses that he's thinking about something he likes, but she doesn't know exactly what. Nishikata refuses to let Takaji know he's thinking about her, so he tries to calm down, and then plans a game to propose to Takaji on White Day. This game is essentially a treasure hunt. On White Day, Nishikata places a box with the treasure hunt instructions on Takaji's seat, 
since she will be late to class today due to a trip. Later, as class continues, Takaji messages Nishikata, telling him she won't be able to make it to school because of a large typhoon. On the other hand, due to a careless move by Takao and Kimura, the box with the treasure hunt instructions ends up in the hands of Mina and her friends. They follow the instructions and play the treasure hunt on their own. Meanwhile, Nishikata encounters a big surprise. Kimura hands him an action novel, which Nishikata recalls Takagi once read. He remembers Takagi mentioning the phrase, I love you, as part of the novel. But now that Kimura has confirmed it's an action novel and not a romance, Nishikata is shocked. Nishikata picks up the novel and tries to find the romantic line Takagi told him, and when he can't find it, he realizes that the phrase was something Takagi said from her heart. Knowing this, Nishikata feels confident that Takagi has feelings for him. So he leaves home as fast as he can to go look for Takagi. When he reaches the port where Takagi should be, he spots her in the distance. She takes a taxi, so Nishikata chases after her on foot. Takagi, noticing Nishikata out of the corner of her eye, decides to get out of the taxi and goes to find him. Once they reunite, Nishikata confesses to Takagi that he really wanted to see her. This makes Takagi blush and Nishikata tells her that he didn't come just to tell her he wanted to see her. He reveals that he also wanted to give her chocolate for White Day, but he can't because the chocolate he prepared for her got ruined after some falls. Takaji lets him know she doesn't care about gifts because Nishikata has already given her the best gift in the world, telling her he wanted to see her. After this, she takes his hands and they gaze at each other tenderly for a long while.